he's going to smoke pot. And that's why he ended up getting violation of probation today was because he had violated, you know, he, he'd not passed the drug test. Not only that, he admitted openly to his probation officer that he had smoked cannabis and he is a cannabis activist. He's not going to claim that cannabis is addictive. He's not going to go through some sort of mandatory course that they want to put him through where he'd have to claim that he's an addict or something like that in order to complete the course because he doesn't believe that. Right. And so essentially him being on probation is a waste of probation's time because he's Agreed. just going to VOP. He's going to violate probation. It's just going to be one more person they have to deal with who there's really no point. He's not going to be corrected with quotes around it on this issue. So take him off probation was basically the ruling today, which is great news. I mean, that this is ultimately what Rich Paul wanted. I mean, obviously to be released would have been ideal, but he was on a probation for three years. And had he been convicted of the VOP uh, and, you know, spent a year in jail or something like that on the, on the violation, had he been convicted of that, that year wouldn't come off his probation. So he would sit in jail for a year. Then he'd be right back to two and a half more years to go on probation as soon as he got out. Yeesh. So it would just continue to be this in and out kind of situation where it wouldn't do anyone any good. And, and I think that, you know, the, the probation guy saw that pretty clearly the prosecutor, there was like three people giving opinions basically to the judge today. Actually, four of them. There was the prosecutor. What there the was prosecutor the prosecutor say? The prosecutor wanted as much time as, you know, he wanted a year in jail okay. over this. Uh, the probation officer recommended, I think it was six months. The defense attorney, who did a great job actually, was a public defender, Matt Hill, did a great job. Anyway, he recommended three months, and the judge went with a six month recommendation on this. So our friend Rich Paul is going back to jail. Uh, and he is there now, as a matter of fact. He'll be there probably for about another three months. A little less, perhaps, than three months because he was in there for 37 days pre-trial. So he gets that credited off the six months. Then in New Hampshire, there's a two-thirds good time rule, meaning that if you're sentenced to six months and you're a good boy in jail, then you get four. four months. So take four months. Presume he gets the good time. Take four months. Take a, a knock a month off. No, month plus uh, for the time served. And you got about three months left. Essentially, and, and then after that, chances three are months, good he'll change nothing about his life when he's done. And he's—I mean, this essentially has been a waste of everyone's time, right? Oh well, of course, this has been a waste of everyone's time from day one uh, when they charged him with criminal acts for having a plant and selling that plant voluntarily to other human beings. And Rich Paul made a uh, really impassioned speech more than once, basically. But at the the closing discussion, I guess, the sentencing discussion, the judge kind of went down the line. He actually got recommendations from, uh, as I said, the probation guy, the prosecutor, the defense attorney, and then he heard from Rich. And the video's coming. This part was pretty great. In fact, Jay Freeville, one of the activists here in Keene, said that was the most um, impassioned kind of, I, I'm not using his right word, but the most impressive court experience that he'd ever had. It was really move, moving, I guess, uh, for him because Rich basically spoke out at the end of this and pointed out the absurdity of all of this. I mean, it was also pointed out, by the way, that in the one of the incidents that the state was trying to get him for, which was a weapons possession claim, which they did not succeed on, right. by the way, uh, the incident involved two two people, or you know, a group of people in Central Square, kind of yelling at each other, and then a couple thugs came over and actually attacked one of the people in Central Square. Was not Rich. Rich did not get in the the fight, but he had had a like a monopod from a camera with him, and was sort of brandishing it as he was prepared to defend himself and others if necessary. Well, they sort of claimed that. Uh, I mean, I believe the. You know, whoever was testifying claimed that he was using it more like a shield than a sword. Yeah, that's true. And so that was, uh, the, you know, the state was unsuccessful. Interestingly, the thing about violation of probation hearings, I was going somewhere else with that, but regardless, uh, the violation of probation hearings, are, it's preponderance of the evidence is what they have to convict you by. So that's not as stringent of a process as a, like a real criminal trial. Right, which so, is supposed to be beyond a reasonable doubt. However... I don't think people actually use that standard. Yeah, I mean, there's a good argument to be made there. Yeah. Two-thirds of felony cases uh, that actually go to court in this country, people are found guilty. That doesn't sound to me like people who are using the beyond a reasonable doubt measure. Really? In two-thirds of the cases, 
um, since, I mean, we, we can conclude that fewer than 1% of cases go to court, that somehow that two-thirds of those cases, uh, it's beyond a reasonable doubt this person's guilty, sounds like a bunch of state worshipers that don't want to think for themselves and want to get home for dinner is what it sounds like to me. Right. So, But even in this trial, it wasn't beyond a reasonable doubt. It was preponderance of the evidence. And that basically means that the judge decides. Based, you know, He just kind of looks at what he's given and says, huh. Oh, yeah, I think that's I think that's true, or I think that's not true. Yeah. Ultimately, that's what uh, preponderance of the evidence is. So it's nowhere near as stringent. And the other thing that was interesting about violation of probation is just really these are more examples of how the probation system is designed to screw people. I mean, you if you VOP, odds are good you're going back into jail. Um, so not only because it's a preponderance of the evidence, but also because there are no rules of evidence in a violation of probation hearing. So I'll give you an example of what that means. There was at one point the video of the fight in the park mm-hmm. wherein Rich is seen brandishing the uh, the monopod in a defensive sort of posture. The defense actually objected to the video being introduced based on the rules of evidence, meaning that the video has to be, um, it has to be verified. It has to be, someone has to testify to the veracity of the video itself. You know, was this the original video? Had it been modified, edited, doctored in some sort of fashion in a regular court that's an important question right that's one of the rules of evidence in violation of probation court they do what they want there are no rules of evidence this is something i learned today in court and i can't say i was too surprised about it given all the that, better reason why not to go on probation right I mean, this probation system is designed to screw you. So the judge just let the video in. No problem. No, it was fine, ultimately, because the video shows Rich Paul being defensive and not attacking anybody. So I think that it was good, ultimately, that the video was let in. I don't think that it was a problem. But it was an interesting kind of teaching experience in that it's open season. Anything goes here at this violation of probation hearing. So not only are there no rules to evidence that it, in that anything can be submitted— that has some tangential, you know, relevance to the the hearing. And then it's a preponderance of that very same evidence that has no rules attached to it as far as what somebody is being convicted. I mean, it's just crazy. That's the system. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. was really happy that uh, 20 Liberty activists were in the courtroom today and only uh, two Stop Free Keen folks uh, came out, which was a little on the low side for them recently. More coming up here. You can take control. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. L L C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. 
Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I'll put a link up on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter when I get a chance uh, to link over to all the tweets that Daryl W. Perry, our regular Friday night co-host, he was in the courtroom today, and he does a great job of tweeting out what's happening in the courtroom, uh, various different courtrooms, uh, court hearings that he attends and i did link those over at freekeen.com so if you want to go back in time you want to scroll back through the afternoon it was about a mm, let's see maybe like a two and a half hour hearing at superior court here in Keene, where our friend rich paul has been sent to jail for a six month sentence but after the six months is a violation of probation so called after the six months he will be out and probation will no longer be hanging over his head. However, he will still have suspended sentences, meaning that if he is convicted of some other kind of misdemeanor or felony while he's out on the suspended sentence, they could then bring back that suspended sentence and uh, do a motion to impose that sentence, when he, which could send him back to jail for some more time. Also, don't forget, blockchain.info. That's where you go to get a free Bitcoin wallet. Probably the best free Bitcoin wallet. I don't know how many of them there are out there, but blockchain's got over a million people who have downloaded and hooked themselves up with the uh, with the Bitcoin wallet. Over. Very cool. Very easy to use. It's available for iPhone and uh, Android. In fact, the Android just got a new version, which is really excellent, and it's still free. You can actually go to blockchain.com and easily access their mobile software, and you can go to blockchain.info for a more full experience with all kinds of uh, useful info and stuff. So go and check that out and get your free Bitcoin wallet today. As we continue here, uh, again, Rich Paul back in jail. I'm sure it will only be a matter of time before he can get himself to a phone and check in with us uh, via the uh, the hotline here in the studio. And again, the the tweets from today are at freekeen.com. And there was one other thing that uh, that I wanted to point out, at least off the top of my head. I'll review the notes here in a little bit. But Rich's speech at the end was was really good. In fact, you know, it might might even be worth cutting out of the video. It's a two plus hour hearing, and most people don't want to sit and watch a two hour long. YouTube video. <laughs> Some somebody likes it, but uh, yep, you know, most do. people don't. And so maybe I'll cut that out, make it its, its own separate thing, because he really did a, a great job in in bringing attention to the fact that he hasn't hurt anyone, and all of this time 
has been spent on this. You know, there have been hours and hours of court hearings, including his original trial. There have been, you know, these dealings with the probation officer. He's checked in, you know, countless times and been tested and hassled. And now he's going back to jail and he spent now, you know, got the six month sentence. The original sentence was 12 months. So he spent about eight months in jail on the 12 month sentence. He's going to spend, you know, four months in on the six months. He's he's going to have a year in jail after all is said and done for selling flowers. He never was alleged to have hurt anybody, never at any point hurt anyone. The prosecution was trying to get him for brandishing, for having a weapon as a felon in violation of the terms of probation. And uh, he pointed out that, you know, and rightly so, that he was simply def- uh, trying to defend himself. And he wasn't brandishing anything with a, th- with a threatening measure or anything like that. And the judge agreed with him on that. That, you know, that was, that was the refreshing part today was that the state did not get their way, even with the lower burden of proof, the lower, no barrier to entry for evidence, the state still didn't win that one. And so Rich has been vindicated as a peaceful activist today, I think, and he's going to jail for a plant. Yeah, Again, as, as I understand it, as a as a felon, um, this is not legal advice, but uh, that one um, can defend oneself or you know one's immediate family, that kind of thing, if if they're being threatened. So you're not allowed to have a, a weapon, mm. but but you could pick one up if you're being. Threatened. You can use one. Uh, you can imagine if one magically appears in your hand during a crisis situation, you're allowed to use it. If you were in a scuffle with somebody and they had a weapon, and then you were able to take it. Yep, Would I that think that's qualify? the case. Um, here in New Hampshire, there was an interesting case that uh, came through this year, which is um, you know sort of distinguishing what is active possession and how does it relate to people's right to keep and bear arms. So, for instance, um, my wife has the right, the inalienable right, to keep and bear arms, right? Mm-hmm. But um, the laws in the state of New Hampshire and around the country are that I'm not allowed to have active possession of a weapon. Now, active possession, as it was defined by to me in the most rigorous sense, this is the most, uh, you know, the way a court would be most rigorous in, in uh, defining it is, is that if a weapon is closer to me than it is to you, that's active possession. So, you know, you're three feet mm-hmm. from it, I'm two feet from it, it's mine. Okay. But that, you know, this is sort of impractical. Um, the judge pointed out this is really an impractical way to apply this rule in, um, you know, in, in real life. Like people live in this house. Yeah. So how do you, how does a, a woman uh, who wants to keep and bear arms or, um, you know, who's married to or living with a man who's uh, convicted of a felony, how, do, how does she get to practice her right to keep and bear arms? So it's very sort of an interesting case that's out there. And I don't know if, uh, I don't know how it's all going to come down, but it, it looks like in many ways that, uh, you know, the, the people are beginning to see that simply a well in, uh, a felon walking by a, a steak knife doesn't mean that everybody in the room is going to die. All right, let's come back to the felons' weapons issue here in a moment. I've got Bob on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, Bob. Hi. Hey, you're on Hi, the air. Good to, yeah, it's good to talk with you again. I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, the meeting we had on online on the phone last time. Okay. I had an idea that I wanted to share with you. Sure. Go right ahead. Uh, we you, love ideas. Well, <laughs> well you know that uh, I am not in favor of government generally. I, I, I think that we can do just fine without government. And I've been looking for some time at the transition. How do we get from having this oppressive burden to not having it? And Darn good it question. Me, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people ask that question, and I, I came up some years ago with uh, a method uh, that might be an interim step in the right direction. So you, you need to understand, I do not like the thing I'm going to suggest because uh, it's uh, you know it, it involves continuing the existing system for a while, but we could modify it in a way that would make it a little less unpalatable. And so what would that be? Simply this. Uh, instead of saying, okay, we're going to end taxes, which I certainly hope will happen eventually, but while we cannot yet say we're going to end taxes, let's give control of how the taxes are spent to the taxpayers. Let's have a simple online procedure that any, anyone and everyone who pays taxes can follow they go online, fill out an online form, and they specify 
for each thing they want to support with their taxes, how what percentage of their taxes will go for that particular purpose. I like it. Purpose. I think we need to see that happen here in New Hampshire, and it's actually something I proposed as well. Um, in fact, as a uh, minister in the Shire Free Church, and Mark is one uh, as well, the church has decided that in regards to the church parsonage here, uh, we'll be paying only for the services that are valued by the church, like clearing the roads, you know, protecting people from actual criminals, real murderers, and things like that. And uh, if, But if that were built into the system to, to give people the option, look, just fill in the blanks here. How much do you want? Here's what we recommend. Uh, here's what we're asking for. And you know, how much are you actually going to give to these various different bureaucracies? I think that would be a smart idea. Bob, thanks for the call tonight. There's more coming up here. 855, 450 free. And I think that if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen in New Hampshire with the Free State Project. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex. Plus, Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. Now, how much money will all those closeted Republican convention goers bring into the city, Marie? A lot. The average area prostitute normally makes around two to three hundred dollars a week jerking off truck drivers behind the bus station. I see. Next week, they are expecting to make 30 times that amount sucking off secretly gay Republicans. Wow. You figure the fact that these delegates are so repressed and filled with self-hatred. Yes. They tend to like the filthiest, kinkiest sex acts imaginable. Oh, that's right. Which great. tends to cost more. The average well-adjusted gay man has no desire to smear fecal matter all over his partner's <laughs> face no. or be beat up by him. But that is exactly the sort of thing that these repressed conservatives are willing to pay top dollar for. Okay, as well as the services of transsexuals, oh, I understand. Yes. A, a lot of the Republicans repeatedly call the prostitutes faggots or True. start crying after they've had sex with them. I suppose the prostitutes are shoring up on their politics so they can talk to the Republicans. Ha ha, Andrea, what do you think this is, pretty woman? They're just there to get f right. Thank you, Marie Byron. Oh, RNC's always a good time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com.
Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want, whether it's a proposal for a new tax system, as we just heard a moment ago, which I have to say, I'm behind it. I I like the idea that Bob proposed a moment ago where taxpayers would be essentially allowed to decide which way their money is allocated within the government. That makes sense to me. It turns government into a essentially a voluntary association. More so. I mean... You you wouldn't have the choice of whether or not you would send them money, but you would. Well, have why to- not? If they haven't provided services to an individual, they don't feel like they're in dispute, then they should be able to give zero, don't you think? I, I well, I'm certainly for that. But Wasn't that what I, was being proposed? I, I was hearing more like you know you give your money and then you get to allocate where the money goes. So everybody's taxes are three thousand dollars this year, and then you can allocate you know where do you want the money to go. And I suspect that that you know at that point you're asking. Um, you know, one of the problems there is you're asking amateurs to do the allocation that accountants should mm-hmm. be doing. You know, it's like well, they could take the recommendations. What I was saying was that th- maybe my proposal is a little bit different from Bob's, but mine would volunteerize the tax system, make it voluntary, make it consensual. Um, and then essentially the government could send out a tax bill with a recommend, you know, based on the valuation of the homes, just like they do today. Here's the recommended amount uh, that we think you should pay and broken down by all the different departments. If you pay our recommended amount without filling out this form, then this is where things are going to go. But if you fill out the form, then you can adjust uh, the amounts as as are appropriate. I, I would like to see that happen because then the different bureaucracies would be more interested in good customer service. Agreed. Knowing that. Well, every year they're not guaranteed to bring in the same amount, so they need to make sure they treat people nicely, uh, or at least but as nicely as they can. let me ask you this. Can. If your cell phone company um, sent out a bill to you that said, how much would you like to pay for the service that we're giving you? Mm-hmm. Um, don't That's you different. Think- That's different, because you are in an agreement with the cell phone company. You have signed some sort of a contract. Now there's an argument to be made that the contract is bunk in the first place, because it's being offered by a corporation that hasn't really been signed by another person, uh, but that's another issue. The point is, you did agree you to those a- rates. Agreed to an understanding. Yeah, not the not's not the case with most people in the government. Uh, most people never agreed to all the rules and taxes and bureaucracy. They just happen to be born somewhere or move somewhere for a job or move somewhere for a family or for a lover or something like that, and they never signed a contract with the government there, ever. And if they did sign something with the government, it was probably under threat, duress, and coercion, or one or the other. Well, so it's um, invalid. a lot of people would claim that simply coming on to the government's property, um, which is to say the city or municipality or county or state yeah. that the government uh, is in charge of, puts you um, under a certain jurisdiction. That's like a you, you myth. Agreed. That's, well, that's it's basically not, it's a religious untrue, belief. It's not untrue when you talk about your property, right? It's not their property. They are a criminal gang. Everything they have, they got because they stole from people. So if you steal a bunch of money from somebody and then you go and buy a bicycle with that, that's not your bicycle. You've stolen people's money. So ultimately, it's the people whose money was stolen it's bicycle, and they would have to liquidate it and then divvy up the uh, the proceeds from that liquidation. But it's not your bicycle, even though you went to the store and handed over stolen money to buy the bicycle. Same thing with the government. It's not their roads. It's not their buildings or their cars. They just possession. They have active possession of those things. So you know, ultimately, it's theirs by virtue of the fact that they control it, but it's not theirs in any sort of legitimate means. There you go. You can share your thoughts. 855 450 free. You know, Mark, you were talking about being a felon in possession of a weapon. What are the rules? Now, obviously, it's probably different in every state, but you're not allowed to have a knife. I mean, is it true? You can't even cut, uh, cut a steak. Well, Okay, that doesn't so make sense. I was under that impression um, for some time. I've had a, law- a lawyer looked into it, and um, you know, I mean, there's a line in there that somehow or another I didn't see. That's really just as plain as the nose on my face. Um, so, in the state of New Hampshire, I can't have a knife if I wield that knife in a deadly way. So, okay. for instance, if you were to hold a knife on me and threaten to or, or stab me with a knife, it would be aggravated uh, battery, right? Sounds okay, right? Right. So if I were to stab you with a knife, it would be aggravated battery and a weapons violation for a felon. Uh-huh. 
So because I wielded the knife in a deadly fashion. So, so if since, you were to offensively stab me, correct. Okay. Um, so that what we have going on here is essentially them just piling up charges as though one really needs it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really sort of a silly thing, but um, I can legally use a um, a knife as a um, you know to cut a to cut a steak or whatever. I thought you couldn't. However, I cannot possess a Billy's. Would uh, Billy's be like a monopod for a camera? Like uh, it really Rich just Paul depends on what they want to define it as. I mean, what is a Billy Club? Mm -hmm. It is a stick. I cannot possess a slung shot, which is a weight at the end of a, uh, a rope. So, I right, cannot so possess a sword cane, although I can have a cane and can have a sword. Um, I can't a minute, have a dirk, a but on. I can have a sword. Hold on, I'm, crazy. Con I'm confused. So the sword cane. You can't have. Correct. But yet you said that you could have a weapon so long as it's not used no, as a I weapon. No, I said a knife. You could have a knife. Specific. I see. So a certain blade shorter than yep. a, a certain number of inches. Yep. And it's also an additional felony for me to use anything as a deadly weapon in the state of Got New it. Hampshire. Got it. Now, around uh, the country, there's, there's like this rule that uh, is nationwide that a felon can't possess a weapon that is, you know, a, a firearm that is manufactured... I think af on or after 1899 mm -hmm. and uses ammunition readily available in the United States. However, I have seen uh, people say that you can have, you know, these, these particular rifles because the receivers in these rifles are manufactured before 1888, mm. um, 1898, and so therefore those things are legal. But I don't, I mean, and obviously they use ammunition that's readily available in the United States, right, so, so I don't know what that means. So let me see if I've got this straight. It seems pretty confusing. Yep. So you can't have a firearm under any condition, except if it's older than 1899. Correct. You can't have a sword. Oh, wait, no, you can't have a cane sword, but can you can have, have a, now this is only in New Hampshire, right? That's correct. Okay, so. Other states, I can have a cane sword. You cannot have a cane sword, but you can have a sword. Yep. You can have a cane. Yep. You could have a monopod, so long as it's not used as a deadly weapon. Correct. In offensive purposes, right? So in Rich Paul's case, he had a monopod for a video camera, and at some point when some thugs were coming to attack him, what appeared that they were coming to attack him and his, uh, his girlfriend at the time, and he wielded at that point the monopod as in a defensive stance, that would not have been that's a, a That's legal, possession. from what I can tell. I am not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice. Yeah. Okay. Any other specific things you can't have? There's like a long list, right? Of different yeah, there's things. specific things um, like dirks and stilettos and Under any metallic knuckles. Even for defensive purposes, you can't have those That's, things. Well, um, there's... Okay, so <laughs> pretty much anything's acceptable if my life is threatened. But you can't have possession up until that point. I mean, they're going to want to know why do you have, Billy, um, why do you have metallic knuckles? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They fell from the sky, or whatever the claim is. Is but at that moment in time, I would be able to use whatever I wanted to. Not that I think metallic knuckles are particularly good, mm -hmm. uh, defensive or offensive. Probably better an offensive weapon, but uh, not particularly good defensive one. Share your thoughts, maybe your experience uh, with weapons and felons. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. I think I can't tell you how many them. people a year go to prison. I mean, there's. Hundreds of people in this country uh, that go to prison that have haven't had haven't committed a crime in a decade, but they got caught with a gun as a felon. But they are a felon with a gun, yeah. and that's you know just it. Roberts in Vermont, you're on Free Talk Live with the Ian and Mark. Hey, Robert. Hey, how you how you guys doing? Welcome. Go ahead. Hey, uh, uh, I heard you guys talking about you know, convicted felons and weapons and stuff like that. But I mean, is it? What you've named off, Mark, are the things you can have? What was the question? I'm sorry. Is it what is it the state laws and the federal laws? Is it what you just got done reading off? Are them the are them the things you can't have, like knives and guns and stuff like that? They didn't say anything in there about you couldn't have a can of hornet spray or a ball peen hammer. That's true. <laughs> you can have a ball peen hammer or a hornet spray. Uh, hey, I'm telling you what, I live by myself. Okay, and if I'm in bed and if I'm sleeping, if somebody breaks in, you know, I got my ball peen hammer and I got my can of horn spray right here. <laughs> Right on, Robert. Thanks for the call, man. And uh, Some of that horn spray it. will shoot like 25 feet. Yeah, right? <laughs> 855-450-3. That's 855-450-3733. I'd hate to get a face full of that stuff. Can you imagine? All right, we'll come back. I'd rather have that than the ball peen hammer, I think. <laughs> it's free talk live. 
This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for ten years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair, in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855. 855- Four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you. Uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com, and you can go to modup.net to learn about modafinil. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued, 
trying to get the extra edge when it counts, you can learn about modafinil at modup.net. And you'll find out that studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen are talking about modafinil around the world. Modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. And over at modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the highest potency, so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net is, by the way, a supporter of the Bitcoin community. If you order with Bitcoin, you'll save 33%. To make the deal even better, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget, code FTL over at modup.net. World-class service at a great price on Modafinil. That's modup, M-O-D-U-P dot net with code FTL. We've been talking about being a felon and being in possession of a weapon. In the case of our friend Rich Paul... He has gone to jail today, but not for that reason. He was uh, put back in on a violation of probation, which are so easy to get. In fact, I'm surprised it took six months for him to get his uh, violation of probation. Uh, It's just when I was in jail, I was in there and I was in for civil disobedience for uh, standing in front of a cop car while they were trying to arrest a lady for open, uh, open container possession. Anyway, while I was in there, I met plenty of guys that were in for violation of probation. I mean, I don't know what the percentage of the jail is that's there for violation it's of probation. It's generally a pretty good percentage. But yeah, it's a fair amount. And, uh, you know, almost every single one of them were there for some nonsense. I mean, it wasn't like they beat somebody up. It was just they failed a drug test. Well, I've got to say as a uh, as somebody who sat in prison for eight and a half years, I would see a lot of people come and go, um, you know, on different VOPs of some sort or another. Mm-hmm. And I always thought, what a dumbass. I really just couldn't believe how many of these guys would end up back in jail. Like, I knew if I got my opportunity, it wasn't going to happen. Hmm. However, I think a lot of these guys, you know, I mean, employment prospects aren't as good as I, you know, the expectation I have. Like, I I, I understand that. Like, I don't know. I just don't think they're prepared. I, I don't think they're prepared. I don't think they have what... Uh, um, the skills that uh, that it takes to sort of live a good, you know, a straight life and, and not get in trouble. I don't know. It's just so easy. I mean, to VOP, they can come and search your house anytime they want to in most cases. And Yes, but they don't want to get you unless they want to get you, Ian. Mm-hmm. I mean, these people are probation officers. They've got a lot of people they're working with. Right. Unless you mess with them, they don't tend to mess with you. I mean, they mostly okay. want you to succeed. And, you know, there's there's the people that clearly are uh, not caring whether they succeed or not. And, the, and those people tend to not do very well. Yeah, if you're going to exercise your rights as a free man walking on the land, yeah, things aren't going to go very well. Mm-hmm. If you say... Because you're probation. not a free man. You're a prisoner. It, you, indeed, you probation, are. Probation, you 100- are a prisoner on the outside of the facility. Absolutely. Period. You are a prisoner on the outside of the facility. As long as you conduct yourself in that fashion, you will get done and you will live yeah. You know, you'll live the happy, free life that you want to live. I got to say, I uh, today what happened with our friend Rich Paul, where he was sentenced to six months in jail for a couple violations of his probation involving cannabis, I think that he got what he wanted today. I mean, obviously, he would have preferred three months instead of six, but I think that ultimately this was a success. The weapons charges were were failures. The state did not prove those. All they had proof of was he failed a drug test and he admitted to using uh, cannabis and he said that he would not stop using cannabis in the future. So they actually wiped his probation away. Now he goes to jail for the equivalent of three months when you factor in good time. And when he gets out, probation is gone. Would you, Mark... Given that even you know, even though you were sure you would have gotten through probation, and you weren't, by the way, on probation when you got out, were you? V- very brief time under a, sort of a mistake. But okay. No. The answer is no. Generally, no. Um, if you but had I acted been, like I was. <laughs> if you had been on probation, and you were in for a lot longer than Rich Paul, so yep. Rich is being sentenced to a fifty percent, basically, of his previous sentence. Uh, in addition to get off of probation, if you could make that trade to spend more time in prison or jail 
as Rich is now doing, and then be off the probation rather than having this three-year thing hanging over your head. If you were in Rich's shoes, would you be feeling good about what happened? Or would you, make, if you could make that choice, let's just say you got the the, the option. Look, all right, kid, you go into jail for another uh, six months, and then no more probation after that, or we let you out now, and you're on probation for three years. Right, well— What's um, the best choice from, from your perspective? I tend to agree with you on this one, and I wasn't trying to say that Rich Paul is a dumbass. Um, at least, certainly not in this circumstance. Um, what my cl- like Basically, you're talking about spending— 87 days in, uh, you know, is what we sort of figured this well, out to be. he was in be. for 37 prior to uh, sorry, the trial. 81, uh, anyway. You're talking about, about a four-month sentence. Call it about 90 days on a um, on a six-month sentence. Or, it's really 120, but go ahead. I'm just, you, the math is there, man. Yeah. It's 90 days. He did 37 days already. Uh, you're asking me to to deal with today, right? It would, no, I, I was talking about a theoretical Okay, question. 120, fine. Yeah. Uh, 120 days. You're asking me if- To if get off of another two and a half years of I'm probation. I'm going to lay this out. You don't need to lay it out for me. Yes, 120 days versus two and a half years in prison. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, 120 days in jail versus uh, two and a half, and a half years probation. on probation. I'd absolutely take the 120 days. Yeah. Especially in Rich's circumstance. Rich uh, you know, needs, in his opi- in his mind, Rich needs to medicate with marijuana. Mm-hmm. And he's going to medicate with marijuana. So he's he's not going to be able to not do that when he's on the str- on the streets yep. um they're you know on probation so he might as well take the 120 and just you know cold turkey it for that period of time and then go ahead and and get out. It was interesting. But he claims that he makes terrible decisions when he's not on marijuana, mm-hmm. and that he ruined a, uh, a a personal relationship when he was in previously, um, and just sort of you know sort of blames a lot of bad decisions on him being without marijuana the last time. It's I don't interesting. Know. One of the things that was pointed out by Rich at the hearing was he claimed earlier in the hearing when he testified, and I was so glad he testified. I thought it was an important thing for him to do because you don't have to obviously, but. Um, when he was testifying, he pointed out that he's not addicted to marijuana. He uses it for medical purposes to treat his depression. And when he got out of jail the most recent time, when he was out when he was out on bail awaiting the trial that was happening today, when he was out on bail, the judge said, "You um, you know, you pee dirty, you go back in. You get another, you know, your your bail's gone yep. at that point." And he pointed out he actually admitted at the hearing today, and I wonder if we're going to get the bail money back. Over this, this wasn't made real clear as to whether or not the bail money is going to come back. <laughs> but he admitted at the hearing to having smoked marijuana while in the two-week period while he was out on bail. So he admitted to violating the terms of bail. But what was interesting was that he pointed out that he waited until last night to smoke the marijuana. He's only smoked once in that two-week time frame. And he said he waited until after the drug test that he received yesterday or the day before. Like, right before the trial, basically, he went into probation. He tested clean. So what he pointed out was that proves that he's not an addict, that he chose. You know, he chose to not use marijuana for those two weeks because he wanted to prove that. I, thought I don't that know was that that proves anything. I mean, it shows to- you're not an addict. If you're not using daily and you can stop easily with no major consequences. Uh, well, I don't know if it was easy either, but he did it. You know, If you can stop, then that I think shows that it's not a well, profound addicts addiction. Well, stop for periods of time. Um, I mean, that doesn't really, you know. At, uh, Usually it's against their will. That- when they go to jail, they stop. Sometimes they'll stop on their own for a period of time, for you know a week or two, just I to que- show to people that hey, look, I'm in control. Of I this. question their addiction. Then I don't think well, they're I that don't addicted. Think that, I don't think marijuana is an addictive substance. I think that people can be uh, addicted but the point to was- it. But the fact that Rich Paul is on probation and and shows that he and and chooses not to and chooses to smoke marijuana is, is just as much of a uh, you know indicator in the other direction that he is an addict, right? I don't think that that's. I don't. No, that's not an indicator of addiction. Well, it, it continuing to use drugs in the face of negative consequences is, in fact, an indicator, a large indicator of addiction. A huge, that is what, like, the operating definition the drug treatment counselors use for addiction, mm-hmm. that's it. You, using drugs in the face of mounting bad negative, negative consequences. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, but the point Rich was making was that he'd been assigned to go to this drug counseling class where he would have to make some sort of admission that he was an addict. 
and this was a way for him to sort of prove in the court that he's not actually an addict and that's completely an appropriate thing for him to be sentenced to because for him to admit to something like that would be to tell a falsehood tell a lie about himself more coming up this is the central scrutinizer i steal your labor by force through taxation my job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the freedom fiends i especially do not want you to torrent freedom fiends episodes to keep them drone proof do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,309, silver open at $21, and Bitcoin is trading at $614. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, announcing the newly released Antminer S3 440 Gigahash at only 366 watts. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com. Or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, Al Jazeera was forced to evacuate its Gaza Bureau after it came under fire from Israeli troops, said the Qatar-based network. Witnesses say two very precise shots were fired straight into the building, which is located in a residential area of Gaza City. The channel, funded by Gasbridge Cutter, has provided extensive coverage from Gaza since Israel began its military campaign against the Hamas-controlled region weeks ago. A spokesman for the network said they hold Israel responsible for their team's safety. In the last week, al-Qaeda-linked al-Nusra Front has seized four Syrian cities from the Syrian Revolutionary Front, part of the al-Qaeda-affiliated Free Syrian Army. The United States has funded both groups over the past few years. Al-Nusra has now seized Izmirin, Salkin, Haram, and Arkush. On July 11th, al-Nusra leader Abu Muhammad al-Jalani declared an Islamic emirate in Aleppo. Al-Nusra's declaration came after the Islamic State established an Islamic caliphate across parts of Syria and Iraq. The head of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Bioterror Rapid Response and Advanced Technology Laboratory, commonly known as BRAT, has resigned following an anthrax scare that happened in June. Michael Farrell had been reassigned prior to submitting his resignation on Tuesday. In June, over 80 lab workers were possibly exposed to anthrax after staff found live anthrax on a plate in a lab. There have been no reports of illness as a result of that accident. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority. 
now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Make sure you take action today. You can join for free, and then you'll gain community support and protection online at accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Despite the poverty-stricken crisis in Detroit, the Michigan Department of Agriculture forced the owners of Hill High Dairy and My Family Co-op to dump 248 gallons of milk, to break 100 dozen eggs, and to destroy an undisclosed amount of fresh cream, butter, and cheese. Agents stood over the family as the food was destroyed, alleging the businesses were selling the food without a license. The owners say they provided food to people who bought shares in the organic dairy, but the MDA argues the co-op contracts were invalid. Supporters argue that real farming in which animals are healthy and allowed to roam free is treated like a crime. But the state's factory farms where animals are tortured, drugged, and crammed in cages are accepted and approved. The city of Medina, Washington is refusing to pay for President Obama's Tuesday evening fundraising visit, arguing that previous presidential visits have cost local residents as much as $35,000 due to security-related issues, as reported by StoryLeaks' Mikhail Thalen. Last week, city council members decided to bill former Costco CEO Jim Senegal, the host of the president's $25,000 per play Democratic fundraiser. While the area's Democrats are calling Medina's decision politically motivated, some think the idea is likely to catch on across the country. A new Rasmussen Reports National Telephone Survey found that 67% of Americans feel the country is more divided than it was four years ago. Just 7% believe the nation is less divided now, while 21% rate it the same. According to the poll, 35% blame President Obama, 34% point the finger at Republicans in Congress, while only 23% say they're both to blame. That's according to the poll that surveyed 1,000 likely voters on July 17th through the 18th. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all-natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, online at BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Friends of local man Carl Brewster told reporters this week they are all absolutely at a loss as to how he is not completely depressed. I've known Carl for years now, and he really is a great guy, you know, super nice. But honestly, I don't know how he doesn't go home and cry himself to sleep every night. I mean, he walks dogs for a living and no one will ever date him. I really don't get it. Saying that they were baffled at how their close friend managed to remain even moderately happy day in and day out given his life circumstances, sources confirmed they were regularly confronted with Carl's perplexingly gregarious and affable demeanor. I mean, Carl's life really, really sucks, but somehow he manages to wave good morning to me every time I see him and he always has this big smile on his face. Yeah, maybe he's on some kind of medication. Things have always been really awful for Carl, but he's never really been depressed. I mean, I make three times as much money as him, and I'm totally miserable. Honestly, we all thought he would have killed himself by now, but he hasn't. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we invite you to bring up whatever's on your mind toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, woman has been arrested for having a cold? Isn't that what you take Sudafed for, Mark? Having some kind of sinus thing? What Allergies. Allergies. Uh, so she's in trouble. We'll, uh, Mark's got that story. We'll share that with you, and your calls are certainly welcome about whatever you'd like to discuss. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm, and our toll-free number is brought to you by ProXPN. That toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. So plenty of uh, stuff to discuss here tonight. Actually, you started the show talking about our friend Rich Paul, who has been on the show as a kind of a co-host, guest co-host, I guess, with us in the past. He is back in jail now after being convicted at a violation of probation hearing where I learned that the probation system is as bad as I thought it was and maybe a little bit worse in that when you get charged with a violation of probation, there's no rules of evidence, meaning the state can inter- introduce any kind of evidence they want from wherever they want without any kind of verification or validation on that evidence. And the case is based on a preponderance of the evidence as far as the decision being made. So therefore, even with the fact that there is no rule to submitting evidence, the evidence itself need not uh, be real firm. It can just simply su- be suggestive 
And as long as the judge thinks you're guilty, that's good enough. Reasonable doubt is not a factor here. It's preponderance of the evidence. So basically, the, the deck is completely stacked against you from the word go in this probationary system. It's been fascinating to kind of watch and to learn about. And the video footage, uh, I, it's probably going to be no earlier than tomorrow morning before it gets online of the, uh, the full hearing. But I did pull up the segment where Rich Paul... Uh, gives his speech at the end, at the very end where he is about to be sentenced to what ultimately is a six-month sentence in New Hampshire. That basically will break down to four months because Rich will likely be well-behaved in jail and he'll get good time. And that'll be just about right because it'll get him out right in time for key invention. Thank goodness. Uh, but we'll uh, go ahead. I want to play just the the closing statement from Rich Paul here to kind of give people a little taste of some of what happened. He also got very emotional on the stand when he was testifying as well, and I thought it was a really uh, powerful appearance in court from Rich's perspective. And it's actually the audio here is really good. The video, when you're shooting in the courtrooms, at least in these courtrooms, you've got to shoot from the back. So whenever someone's talking from the the like the prosecutor or defense table, all you see is their back. The video isn't particularly interesting, but the audio, I think, is pretty good. So here you go from Rich Paul's hearing today. I just want to get on with my life. And, you know, you, you, you took 12, 12 months of it, and that's not enough. You can take some more. But the probation thing is, you know, it's, it's not a good way to live. You know, if I hadn't been on probation, then I at least could have taken a break from civil disobedience by going to Colorado. That's an interesting point, because when you're on probation, in most cases, I think almost, almost all of them, you are restricted to where you cannot leave the state without special permission from the probation department. Right. And if you want to move to another state, so if he wanted to go visit his parents, as he mentions here in a moment, he would have to get permission for that visit. If he wanted to move to Colorado or Michigan or wherever, because Colorado has uh, legal cannabis, Michigan has medicinal cannabis. If you wanted to move, you have to get permission from both states. You have to get permission from the probation office in New Hampshire to leave, and you have to get permission from the probation office in whatever the destination state is to accept you into their probation system. So it's pretty difficult. To yeah, leave. It, it is very difficult. Yeah, you basically you're stuck. Let's continue here. Because civil disobedience is tiring, and I'm tired. But, but I can't just stand down and say, "Oh no, don't do it to me. Do it to somebody else." If you're going to do it to somebody, you might as well do it to me. You know. But, you know, I would, I would rather get on with my life as soon as possible and have this not be an issue and be able to make commitments to an employer and know that I will be able to stick with those commitments. One of the, uh, and that's a great point, one of the things he'd pointed out earlier during testimony was that he has had three job offers since he's gotten out of uh, not just jail, but within the last couple weeks, he's gotten some uh, programming offers before his stint as an activist here in new hampshire he was a computer programmer right brilliant guy he is and, there's no doubt in my that's exactly the truth this guy is brilliant yeah and so often i feel like he's uh you know just it's just being wasted um in his activism in many ways well i i understand mark there's a there's a large contingent of people who feel like civil disobedience is a waste and you know the, the the typical claim is oh your talents could be used so much better in other areas. But when somebody does civil disobedience, they do it because they really are impassioned uh, impassioned about something. Yep. They really believe in something so much that they're willing to put their life on the line. They're willing to put their freedom on the line to stand up for that. And to me, that level of passion is far more inspirational to people out there than if Rich Paul were to just code a website or something like that. That's not to say that coding websites is a bad thing. I've made a number of websites um, in my time, and I'm sure so has Rich Paul. But uh, I, there are people who will cite Rich Paul as their reason for being here in New Hampshire. How many people cite a website as their reason for being in New Hampshire. Other than the freestateproject.org's uh, website, not too many. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, that's, that's anyway, that's neither here nor there. Rich pointing out that because of probation, you can never really know what tomorrow's going to bring. 
as far as the probation department could come. You get another VOP charge, you go back into jail. How can you hold down a career? How can you keep a job like that? Uh, he couldn't take the programming jobs he was offered when he was on the outside because he knew he has this hearing coming up today where he could go back to jail and did go back to jail. So it doesn't do any good for you to start a job like that where, you know, you need to know. Per you know your code and nobody else does. So it's kind of important for that person to be able to go to work. And so, uh, again, getting off the probation system, very important thing to do. Uh, because otherwise it's not fair to them, it's not fair to me. I'd like to visit my parents. You know, um, they're in Michigan, but I don't really want to live in Michigan. It's pretty much between Colorado and New Hampshire, and I can't transfer probation to Colorado because I don't have any family there. Um, so, you know, I, I guess that's all I can say. I believe that requiring me not to smoke uh, marijuana does violate my right to conscience. Uh, my just, to just to point out something there, the New Hampshire Constitution actually enshrines the right to conscience. And the idea behind this, uh, it's just an idea, uh, I'm not going to play the judge's sentencing, but in the judge's sentencing, he basically glosses, he mentions, he acknowledges what Rich said about the right to conscience and essentially just blows it out of the water. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Right. right to conscience doesn't matter, buddy. The right to conscience is, uh, what, 10A here in... Um... No, it's, I believe, Article 4 of the uh, New Hampshire Bill of Rights, but I don't have it in front of me right yeah. now. So, I mean, the New Hampshire Bill of Rights is, uh, you know, the New Hampshire Constitution is, is distinct distinct among constitutions because it has a right to revolution. That's Article con 10. Contained within. Um, it also has this right to conscience. Uh, but, I mean, a government can't allow a right to revolution and can't allow a right to conscience. These are nothing but lip service. If there's a right to conscience when it comes to a state... You know, and by state I mean, uh, you know, a monopolistic form of government that uh, claims uh, that claims to be a monopoly in a given uh, land area. It means there's no competition. If um, if a state allows conscious objection, then it, then it allows people to opt out of the state, and you can't opt yeah. out of the state. Well, maybe you can. I mean, maybe enough people, if they did it, they would be successful, Mark. And maybe things like the right to conscience has never actually been appealed to the Supreme Court. I don't know if that's true or not in New Hampshire, but I know that uh, Brad Jardis, somebody we used to have on this show on a regular basis, former police officer, made the claim that Article 10, uh, part of it had never been brought to the Supreme Court. So the, the court's never brilliant ruled. when it came to laws, that's for sure. The courts, the, you know, there's a good chance the court has never ruled on this, which, by the way, I've got it here now. Uh, Article 4 of New Hampshire's Bill of Rights. Among the natural rights, some are, in their very nature, unalienable, because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. We can talk more about what that means here in a moment and continue. Rich has a little bit more to say in front of the judge before he was sentenced today to go back to jail for cannabis. This is Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here, toll free. Maybe you want to talk about the idea of the right to conscience. It's actually outlined in the New Hampshire Bill of Rights, and I don't know how many other state bills of rights have similar text. I'd be interested in finding out. Well, I'm not um, sure. I'm reading this uh, this Article Four of the New Hampshire Constitution. Yeah. It 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 doesn't talk about a right of conscience. It talks about among the natural rights. Some are in their very nature unalienable, because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Yeah. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. It talks so, about more than one right of conscience. Right. It's claiming that there are rights of conscience, which doesn't necessarily mean that there is a right of conscience. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't like, know what you mean. A right of conscience may need not be one of the rights of conscience. This is a name uh-huh. for some rights that are unalienable from their standpoint. We're reading a, a text that is more than 200 years old. Well, to be clear, I don't know what these people mean when they say it. Well, that's the thing. It's not defined. So when and if it were to come to the Supreme Court of New Hampshire, odds are good they would define it as something that does not give you the power to actually use your conscience. I, uh, I, I but I mean, you know, when I we think read that, it, that's what when I read it, at least that's what it says to me. And of course, our opinions don't matter when it comes to the courts. It's all the men and the women in robes that matter. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. But you know, when I read this. And it follows in Article 3, and they're kind of related. So let me go back to Article 3 here, which says, When men enter into a state of society, they surrender up some of their natural rights to that society in order to ensure the protection of others, and without such an equivalent, the surrender is void. That's the citizenship yep. line there. Sure. That's the thing that says that when you enter this society, society being a voluntary association of individuals coming together for a common purpose, generally that's what a society right. is, when you enter the society, this one, you give up certain rights and in return be, for protection. And this might be like, you know, I don't know, the right to live in silence, 
for instance. You know, like a lot of people, they don't like it when folks go down the road and they hear the 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 radio blaring mm-hmm. um, out of the car. I don't like that particularly either, mind you, but it's kind of like one of those things, you know, you live in an apartment building, you expect more um, some noise, yeah. you live in a house, you expect less noise, you live in a farm, you expect less noise. So, you know, maybe it's the, uh, when you're talking about the things you give up in order to live in a society, you know, what are those things? And I would think that there's- They don't define them either. They don't define those either. You know, maybe, I mean, you know, you want to live in a city- I don't think there's any expectation that you would dr- breathe perfectly clean air, right? Like there's going to be mm-hmm. cars around and exhaust and stuff. Well, right. And so again, they say that you, you know, there's so there's clearly two categories. There's the things that you could give up in return for protection, yep. whatever those things are. And then there's the rights of conscience, which is what Article 4 talks about, which they say could not possibly be uh, alienable. You can't give them up because nothing that's equivalent to those rights could be traded back to you. There's no deal. There's no possible way you can make that deal. And I want to know, when did I make the deal? You know, the Article 3 deal where it says that I gave up uh, certain rights to live in society? When did I make the deal? Uh, you didn't. You didn't sign the document. Now, could I undo the deal by moving to some place that is not that doesn't have a society, right? Then this may very well have been true in New Hampshire in 1770 whatever the constitution was written, 1769, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly 1783. sure. 1783. 1783. Great. Um in 1783, there may very well have been places that you could move sort of out of white man's legal purview. Mm-hmm. But uh, not now. I, I, wh- how do I do this? How do I leave your uh, jurisdiction? Mm. Because, I've been trying for years, Mark, and they just won't let me. Right. I mean, in order to even get out of the country, I've got to file for their paperwork, right? I've got to mm-hmm. have the uh, um, their uh, you know passport. Don't forget there's an exit tax on anybody who leaves with, with enough money. So, you know, I, I don't know. Since I didn't sign their form, it seems like I should be able to leave without having to give up any money. You're free or you're not free. In Rome and you know throughout human history, slaves purchased their freedom. Having to pay an exit tax, I, I, you know, that in my opinion, makes you a slave. And it seems pretty obvious. So where do I go? I guess I have to go inside the United States. Where do I go inside the United States where I don't have to deal with this society that they're talking about, that I gave up the rights to be inside of? Mm-hmm. Where do I have to go outside of the United States? If Who, we know, if what, we knew, we'd probably be there, Mark. What legal jurisdiction is going to leave me alone when I move in there? Or is it that they don't have to look, we don't have we don't have any control over those other jurisdictions. We're just writing our own little piece of paper here. And if you happen to be inside this legal border you've given up those rights i mean it's really it's kind of it's you can go to any plantation you want to go to as long as you live on a plantation that's basically the deal yeah and you never agreed to it toll free number tonight is 855 450 free so rights of conscience unalienable that's what rich paul's referring to when uh when he makes the statement in the uh, VOP hearing and he's as he's about to be sentenced where he talks about his right of conscience let me continue the video violate my right to conscience uh my first amendment right of free expression because marijuana is a sacrament in my church and although it doesn't have legal um legal power i think it's sac- it, it, it violates some words that are very important to me We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that it is to secure these rights that governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. By the way, Rich Paul doing that off the cuff, uh, quoting that statement, looking directly at the judge the entire time. He did not have notes from which he was reading. He's uh, yeah. just outstanding at that stuff. Well, I'm, <laughs> let's. The, the fact is, is that when you look at uh, libertarian types, these are the most educated voters, the most educated uh, uh, you know people mm-hmm. in in a given society on um, government. They're the ones who know. You you ask these people who've sworn oaths. <laughs> To these documents, they don't have a a foggy clue what they say. I mean, this the, the, these judges they'll say things like, "The Constitution has no bearing in this court." Uh huh. Like they swear an oath to it. They take pictures in front of the flag, <laughs> and then they say it has no bearing there. Yeah. 
It's crazy. When Jefferson was asked to clarify this a little bit, he said, doesn't giving them the right to pursuit of happiness give them the right to do anything they want? And he said, no, because all men are created equal. And therefore, in his vision, the end of your right to pursue happiness was where you harm somebody else. I still haven't done that. I still haven't harmed anybody. And I just want it over. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Have a yeah. I thought that was a really powerful way for him to end his uh, sentencing statement. I still haven't harmed anyone. And no I just one, want this over. No one has alleged that he has harmed anyone. Not even in the weapons possession claim, which was completely failed by the state today. They, they bombed on that claim. He wasn't alleged to have actually used the weapon, even to defend himself with. He would have, <laughs> but he did a monopod in defense. Yeah. So, interesting day in court. Lots was learned. The video will be available later on, probably tomorrow at some point, at freekeen.com. We'll continue here. Your calls are welcome about whatever's on your mind. When will people stop being put in prison cells who have not harmed anyone? I hope it's in my lifetime. 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like... Do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. 
Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves. You may do that toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. You get to create the content. You submit whatever you want. Free Talk Live allows you to submit whatever, you know, maybe it's a news article or a blog post, a YouTube video. You submit it through our Reddit-based system. It's free, and then other listeners can vote it up or down, and you get to vote on things as well on the front page. So we'll know what you think's important. Go to freetalklive.com. You can get interactive for free. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for the things that we give away on our website. So again, go to freetalklive.com. If you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's delicious coffee. There's no coffee that you're going to find that's, uh, that's, that's of higher quality than BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. This is the best of the best coffee. And you can get a free pound by simply going there and signing up for the subscription at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can cancel that subscription anytime. You pay the shipping for the first pound, but it is yours for free. Now, um, what BuzzBox does that other high-end coffee manufacturers don't seem to have the, nearly the concern for is, is that they've got a system set up where people uh, you know, near the communities where they do their farming are able to, to get into coffee co-ops so that they can make a better life for themselves. And... This is the uh, the the, so, the the sort of um, fair trade done right, as opposed to you know just slapping a sticker on there and you know saying you've got fair trade and you know paying too much to union organized folks and that kind of thing. This is uh, this is the way it should be done, and it's one of the reasons that I really do like Buzzbox Coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com, get your free pound, and you can cancel the subscription anytime. But if you keep on going, then we're able to give, uh, for every 10 people that sign up for BuzzBox Coffee, we're able to give a microloan to another family around the world. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, we're going to get to the story about the lady arrested for buying Sudafed, but first, to the phones and the fun. We've got Greg in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Greg. Hey, you guys. Hey, Greg. What's on your mind tonight? Um, well, I just wanted to call in and uh, discuss the the stuff happening in the Middle East mm. um, and, and how this I know it's uh, throwing more controversy on, uh, on what are some already controversial ideas sometimes in America. But What uh, is happening in the Middle East uh, that you would like to comment yeah. upon? Yeah, Ian doesn't know. Go ahead. Tell well, him. the Middle East is a big place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, I want to mention two places in the Middle East uh, where, where we see basically uh, the withdrawal of previous governments and what happened was uh, described by many people to be a state of anarchy. Now, I wouldn't say it's completely anarchy. Um, where are we talking about? Means. So one would be Libya, uh, where Gaddafi was uh, – uh, basically his regime was eliminated. And the other is Gaza. But Gaza, after the Israel um, withdrawal in 2005 and before it was taken over by Hamas. So here we have two regions that were basically um, – devoid of any monopoly on power. And if you look at Gaza, for example, um, it was composed entirely of clans, Hamulas, which would basically be at war with each other perpetually. And uh, what Hamas did, uh, you know, it, it is a terrorist organization uh, as, uh, recognized by many countries, but what it did was it gained a monopoly on the arms. Uh, it disarmed the, uh, the rival Hamulas, and uh, that's the situation today. So I'm kind of – I don't see – it's not obvious to me which situation is better 
uh, necessarily. I mean, in terms of people dying or anything else, uh, anarchy doesn't seem to be superior. Well, I don't advocate for anarchy. Neither um, do I. I think it's a terrible term, and it, uh, you know, one of the reasons is because of the conversation we're having right now. Um, people will say, but look, these places with, people even say places with weak governments, um, they'll, they'll point to those, and they'll say, well, look, look at what the results are, as though a, um, you know, a, a stronger government, a more powerful government results in something good. Because I can point at North Korea that has a very so strong, very centralized government and say, look, that crap doesn't work either, right? These people are starving. Um, but the reason I don't use that term is just because I'm not interested in um, the absence of a, j just the absence of a monopolistic state. I'm interested in voluntarism, people understanding the idea um, that, you know, people are sovereign in and of themselves and that you shouldn't do harm to them. So this is a, this is a philosophy on top of everything else. So if, for instance, you just today, um, for whatever reason, Washington went boom, right? Let's say that you know, a mm -hmm. meteor strikes Washington, D.C. and destroys Washington, D.C. and the surrounding areas. You know, meteor I, party. I, you're going to have some kind of grasping for the ring of power yeah, here. Yeah. That, well, look that's at because, Somalia. Yeah, people don't mm -hmm. have an understanding that, uh, look, let's just leave people alone on this and, and you know, get them uh, and, and, and they'll they'll take care of things on their own. No, they're going, everybody has an understanding of a centralized state. They have a belief system that we must have this state. It's that conversation I'm trying to undermine. Yeah, this because idea, it'll just be recreated. Yeah, absolutely. It will just be recreated. But mm -hmm. it, once you can sort of teach people that, look, human freedom works Here's some examples. Human freedom works. It's moral. Let me show you this, this, and this. I wouldn't disagree that, yes, um, you know, people are going to continue to grasp for the ring of power in these places, and, and they're going to use, um, they're going to use uh, weapons to do that. But what you need to understand is here in the United States, we don't have a monopoly on violence. The state doesn't have a monopoly on violence. There are people constantly competing with the state on a monop on, on their use of violence. The state claims a monopoly on violence, and many people tend to agree with that monopoly, but it doesn't actually have it. So, for instance, uh, my wife cheats on me. I decide, rather than punishing her through the court system, trying to get custody of, custody of my child or, and um, you know, more of the, uh, the, the shared assets, I'm going to shoot her. That is me competing with the state— as um, you know, in the area of violence, the state has its sort of set up court, and it will use force to get to to, to enact that uh, those rules that they they pass down from their court. But I'm competing. I've decided, no, no, I don't want their their use of violence. I want to use my own. So people are constantly competing. Uh, you know, armed gangs are a good example. The Crips and Bloods, they're competing with their local and uh, f state and federal governments for control of certain areas. I get your point, Mark, but you could argue the state right. has a monopoly on the legitimate use of violence or what is perceived as legitimate. Uh, it depends on who you're saying it's perce perceived by. Yeah. Perception is, uh, you know, it's it's the, the ownership of the perceiver. Well, Greg, I agree with pretty much most of what Mark said. I'm not an anarchist. I don't believe that anarchy should be promoted. Uh, I think anarchy has a connotation of a lack of rules, and I'm totally fine with rules as long as it's you know on your private property. You can set whatever rules you want. Um, so I think that in the examples that you've given, you have people who've been thrust into a situation with a power vacuum, without a state around, or you know the, the you know the remnants of a state, and then you'll see those things being created again, as we've pointed out. If, however, what you have before a, sit, a, a situation of statelessness is a sort of an evolution of thought. If you have people being educated to come to the understanding of why voluntarism, the idea of humans interacting consensually, is a good idea and have them embrace that concept, then you could truly have a shot at a stateless society where people are, you know, we still have protection agencies. They're just not, you know, the one-size-fits-all state protection agency. They don't get guaranteed a budget every single year. They have to earn their budget, like the Threat Management Center in Detroit, which we talked about the other night. So uh, so I, I don't mind a right. lot of the things the state does, like road work. I just think that it shouldn't be monopolized or, you know, threatened. You know, you shouldn't have to be forced to pay for those things. That's the idea that I want to promote. I don't want to promote, you know, bombings and fear in the streets and random acts of violence, which is what people think of when they think of anarchy. 
Yeah. Um, well, I think I get where you guys are coming from. I, I, if uh, Probably, if I was to summarize your answer, it's that if people are not ready uh, to have uh, no government, then... Uh, you know, then uh, no government will not be good for them. Well, they I wouldn't say possible. I, I mean, wouldn't say people could live without government. I think government's necessary. I if, think, however, that government needs to be voluntary, not imposed upon people. If people aren't ready to have a state, then, you know, or if people aren't ready to have no state, then there will always be the state. There's more coming up here, though, Greg. If you want to hang on, I, only, I know you only really had a chance to ask your question. It's Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1 800 915 2955. That's 1 800 915 2955. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips, tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com you can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. The 
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here toll-free. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network. What does that mean? Well, it's private and it's global. So they encrypt your data. And there are different servers around the world that you can connect to to get that data out. So what happens is you connect to ProXPN server. Their software on your computer encrypts all of the data leaving your computer and coming into your computer. It goes through your ISP, your internet service provider. But the ISP, because your data is encrypted, no longer can data mine you. They don't know what you're doing anymore. So it just kind of passes through your ISP and then it goes off to ProXPN server where it is then decrypted and sent out to the rest of the internet. So it's a great way to prevent your internet service provider from gathering information about you. And also the fact that you're encrypting your data means that others who are right on the receiving end of that data can't gather info. So if you're at a coffee shop, the admin of the network there, he can't sniff out your packets and figure out what you're doing. Somebody sitting with a uh, device, a Wi-Fi device, trying to steal your packet information, they can't understand what you're doing. Lots it's of those folks out there. It's encrypted. And you can do it for free with their software at proxpn.com slash FTL. Download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. There's instructions for Linux. It's a little bit different with Linux, but you can get it working. And uh, the encryption protects you. The other thing that ProXPN can do for you, and there's a few, few other things, is they actually allow you to privately torrent, and you can connect to servers all around the world and get unlimited bandwidth with their premium account. Plus, you can get around regional blocks in most parts of the world. Uh, with Pro XPN China. It's getting pretty tough in China, but some places it works, some places it doesn't. They're working on it to try to get a workaround. China's basically attacking all VPN users and shutting down VPNs. Period. Sure. I mean, you know, what in the world would you want to, uh, to be able to control people's uh, internet for and then allow VPNs, VPNs to just get around that? So Pro XPN works pretty much everywhere. It's tried from what we've been told by our listeners who've been using it. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software, get it installed, and then upgrade to premium with our discount code to save 20% for the lifetime of your account. The code is FTL20. That's FTL20. And if you order the annual plan, it breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month. It's really an amazing deal at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo code FTL20. Greg is back with us in New York. Greg, you had called in with a question about anarchy. And Mark and I, of course, disavowed the term. I'm not an anarchist. I'm a voluntarist. I believe all human interaction should be consensual. But I, you know, I realized that basically last segment was you asking your question, Mark and I answering it for most of the segment, and, and then you not getting to say anything you know, regarding and it. And then you don't have much time to respond. So go ahead. Yeah, I basically I get the idea. It, you know, it's definitely a noble uh, vision in its intent. Uh, you guys would like everyone who participates in society to have this sort of innate respect for the rights of others, um, whatever those rights may be in that society, maybe uh, capitalist, you know, anarcho-capitalist. I'm just saying, I'm not saying you guys are anarchists, but, uh, you know, respect for property, or it could be a respect for, um, you know, uh, collaboration and uh, helping each other out, or whatever that is. But mm -hmm. it sounds to me, it could be a little ideological, just like... Uh, oh, it's very ideological. Communist. Right, so, okay, so then my question would be, from the practical point of view, you know, when the socialists uh, were asked how come their society is not uh, doing so great, they said, well, we just haven't reached a point where um, it's true socialism and not everyone understands how to, uh, how to function in this society yet. So I guess my question is, in a practical sense, wouldn't, since governments, like you say, take, took over the whole world, everything is under government, wouldn't establishing um, this kind of society lead to a vacuum in some area in which case, my question is, what about all the people who don't subscribe to your idea? What if they come from the outside? What if they're marauders? What if they're ISIS that attacks Iraqi cities? Don't you think that there's some banding together for protection that's still required? Sure. I mean, how do you get around all that stuff? Well, um, I think that the first step uh, to this is to allow people to opt out. What we currently have this is a system where you mayn't opt out. If you choose to... Uh, you know, operate on your own, um, you know, not pay taxes to some organization that you've never contracted with uh, for services you never wanted, um, then they will take away your property and or throw you in jail, depending on which tax we're talking about, right? Well, I mean, if uh, you apply for a license to do business in a state, then you are in 
in effect, contracting with that state. Yes, but, but which saying, you know, license are you referring to? I haven't applied to li- to any state for any license to do business in anything, but I can assure you that they will take my property and throw me in jail if I don't play by their rules. Well, I, I presume you guys applied for a radio license. Nope, no radio license. Never. Not in this country. No? Huh. Interesting. Yep. All right, I don't know about the And actually, about believe it or not, in New Hampshire, New Hampshire is one of the states with the fewest occupational licensing, as I understand it. They've still got so. those uh, silly licenses for painting nails and that kind of thing, though. Um, really silly do, that, yeah. uh, for instance, barbers have uh, more hours in than law enforcement officers or M- EMTs. And we've seen people arrested for violating those uh, reg- regulations. There was a guy who gave an illegal manicure uh, several years ago, actually before we moved here to New Hampshire, and he was arrested for it. Because anarchy! Um, and so you know, the point here is, Greg, is, is that if somebody chooses to opt out, then they should be able to opt out. If other people choose to opt out with them and create a little society where they find themselves somewhat protected, I don't think that that local government, that state government, or that federal government has any obligation to protect those people if they're not paying those organizations for protection. Well, guess what? They don't have any obligation anyway, even if you are paying for the protection. You pay into the system, and then they tell you they don't have to protect you either. Now, the Supreme so, Court's been very clear on that, Greg, that the, mm-hmm. even though that what, what governments yeah. sell so, is protection, right. they in fact have no obligation to provide what they sell. So, let's go to the Marauder mm-hmm. Right. part of your question. What if the marauders come in? Well, right now, if the marauders come in, there is no obligation to protect you from the marauders. They have no obligation to do anything for you whatsoever, and there's nothing that you can do about it. In fact, one could argue that the marauders are the government, but that's another you know discussion. But let's look at the idea of a voluntary society, of people coming together for the purpose of you know having a society on a consensual basis. What if the marauders are coming in there, invaders, murderers, whatever, some sort of military, then shouldn't people band together? And the answer is, yeah, anyone who wants to should band together. And people should organize in whatever way they deem appropriate to defend themselves. In fact, I believe that decentralized defense is more effective than a single point and you know kind of control and command and control top down hierarchy right. uh, military. If there's no capital, there's no ca- capital to take. State capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in general, so like a state uh, militia, kind of like a militia well, of the people. No, the, the point I agree, would agree with you on that point, but I would also point out that look, um, you know, the in World War II, the Z Germans didn't beat Z Russians because they were ever, never able to take the capital. They could never get the cap Moscow, and so you know, therefore, even though they can you know siege St- Stalingrad or whatever, they never won because they never got the capital. So it's like the chess game. You have to take the king in order to win. Uh, it doesn't matter whether the losing guy has only one pawn left and the other guy has all of his uh, his pieces, uh, but manages but the pawn manages to take the king. You lose. So, by I mean, the way, this, this th- might be interesting to your listeners. Uh, I'm Russian, and before Germany, Napoleon did in fact take Moscow, but the Russians implemented a scorched earth policy and literally retreated from their capital, and Napoleon still lost. Yeah, the, it was winter. If anybody gets an opportunity to read this story, it is uh, the the most amazing story of like sort of bad luck, heroism. I mean, everything <laughs> could sort of go wrong for one side and right for another in in a uh, in a situation. Hey, Greg, thanks for the call. Great questions and thoughts as always. Appreciate it. You know, the other thing I wanted to say about the marauders, the invaders, you know, what happens in that system. What happens today? If there were actually, you know, if the Canadians were to roll down here in tanks and start invading uh, the United States, well, if the government military decided that they had a tank and there was a tank coming uh, their direction and they needed to roll through your house because it's in the way, you know, yeah. that they got to get to the tank and your house happens to be in the way. They're going to roll right on through your house and they're not going to knock first. And if you happen to be in there and your child gets crushed under the treads of the tank, hey, you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet, right? Sorry about your no, luck. They won't even cut you a check for it. The government isn't there, the state, as we know it, is not there to protect you. 
They say it all the time. I mean, Barack Obama, George Bush, they get up behind the podiums and they're always saying, it's my job as president to protect well, America. The, but what they really are protecting is their bases. They're protecting their bureaucrats. They're protecting their system. And but, they will do whatever it takes to protect those things, including roll right over top of you, your house, your car, your property, your family. They build underground bunkers, but they don't. They build them for politicians and sometimes their families, but not for you. Yeah. Um, now, when the king built the castle, yeah, he built it big enough for some peasants to come in, but look, if there was no room or you didn't get in there quickly enough, the drawbridge is up and the Huns descend and, you know, like, the the walls are there to protect the king and his yeah, family. If exactly. you happen to get within the walls, good for you. If, you, if not, <laughs> no, sorry. All right, we'll come back with more here. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and black forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and License Plate Bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro Stopping Centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,299 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $606. Antiwar.com reports, as Israel's invasion of the Gaza Strip continues to escalate, the overall death toll continues to rise, with civilians the overwhelming victims of the onslaught. Most troubling, perhaps, is the growing number of children among the slain. Israel got some negative publicity last week when they killed four young children in an airstrike against the beach, but there is no indication it changed anything about Israel's targeting standards, and the most recent figures show roughly 24% of those killed in the war are under the age of 18. A lot of these deaths have come as Israel attacks civilian neighborhoods, pounding seemingly random houses and killing large numbers of entire families. Israel has insisted they've warned civilians to flee, but since they don't let any anyone out of the Gaza Strip, there isn't any place for them to go that isn't just as likely to be targeted. Indeed, even as Israeli officials continue to pat themselves on the back for their precise targeting, the number of combatants they've actually hit is a tiny minority of the overall toll. By contrast, Hamas, which isn't known for being particularly accurate with its makeshift weapons, has managed to keep the Israeli toll almost exclusively military in nature, with only three civilians killed in Israel. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. 
Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The LA Times reports, officials said an Arizona inmate gasped and snorted for more than an hour until dying in an apparently botched execution Wednesday that is sure to reinvigorate the national debate over lethal injection in the United States. The death of Joseph Rudolph Wood III was confirmed by the Arizona Attorney General about two hours after the procedure began. Wood had apparently stayed alive so long that his attorney filed an emergency stay after the lethal injection initially failed to kill him, according to legal filings. According to the filing, quote, the Arizona Department of Corrections began the execution of Joseph Rudolph Wood III at 1.52 p.m. At 1.57 p.m., ADC reported that Mr. Wood was sedated, but but at 2.02, he began to breathe. At 2.03, his mouth moved. Mr. Wood has continued to breathe since that time. He has been gasping and snorting for more than an hour. At 3.02 p.m., at that time, staff rechecked the sedation. He is still alive. The execution had originally been set for Wednesday morning, but was delayed by a temporary stay to hear arguments in a last-minute appeal effort by his attorney. His attorney said that his trial attorney failed to present evidence of mental illness, including brain damage, that could have spared him a capital sentence. On Tuesday, the U.S. Supreme Court denied a separate plea by Wood to delay his execution until the state turned over detailed information on the drugs that would be used during his execution and on the quality qualifications of his execution team. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports, another session of Iraqi parliament came and went with no settlement, though it is widely expected that the vote on president will proceed today as the Kurdish bloc has finally settled on a candidate. That will be Fuad Masoum, a longtime member of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan party and a former de facto Kurdish premier during the Saddam Hussein era. Under the power-sharing agreement, the position of parliament speaker traditionally goes to a Sunni Arab, the position of president to a Kurd, and prime minister to a Shiite Arab. This is not a legal requirement, but has so far held true in every Iraqi government. Masoum is said to have narrowly beat out Baram Selah, former Kurdish member of parliament, in the closed-door vote on which candidate would be offered to parliament as the unanimous Kurdish choice. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Like most married couples, Dale and Barbara Patterson like to shake things up from time to time. The couple of 12 years says they've been able to keep their relationship spontaneous and interesting by bickering in all sorts of different positions and even different rooms. There was a while there when our petty nitpicking got pretty predictable. Dale would finish harping on some stupid bullshit first, and before I had time to get a word in, he would just let out a groan, roll over, and fall asleep. Now he really takes his time ripping me a new one over every little thing. Yeah, we'll just pounce on each other the second we get home from work in the evening, <laughs> and then just go right back at it in the morning. I mean, sometimes we'll look at each other directly in the eyes when we're having an argument. Other times she turns her back on me and I just scream at her from behind. We're not exactly shy about doing it in public anymore. Dale gets pretty worked up when there are people around who could be watching or listening. I still can't believe you forgot. Not now. Oh, come on. I said not now. Oh, what? don't even. Don't even what? I asked. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, and we're launching into third hour of the program. You can, of course, bring up anything that you'd like. A lady's been arrested for buying Sudafed. It's been a while since Sudafed uh, crackdowns have been in the news, but, Mark, you've got a story about that. Plus, an update on the s supermarket 
drama that we had talked about earlier this week with the market basket chain embroiled in all kinds of uh, conflict between employees and the CEO and the board and the new CEOs. And it's just been a real dramatic affair. And there's been an interesting turn of events. We'll share that with you if we get the chance. Your calls come first here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Tom is with us in Detroit to start things out this hour. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, guys. I uh, I haven't called you in quite some time, but uh, I had to tonight as I was listening, and <clears throat> you brought up the uh, quote out of the Constitution, and I literally used it today in the court. Which which quote? And uh, the, the, uh, 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 We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Is that so the Constitution on? or That's the, the Declaration? declaration. Of, yeah. That's the Declaration of Independence, I think. Okay, well, we'll, we'll call it you know either one. It's, it's part of the Constitution. Foundational it's document, not. yep. Okay, well, <laughs> it, it was great today when I I, I, I had an arraignment or not an arraignment but a, a motion hearing today, and I mean I actually had this judge at one point for I, I had somebody record it. I know that's not supposed to be done, but so I've been able to go through it tonight. I'm going to get a transcript because the con- case is going to continue. Did you have an and, audio uh, recording or a video recording? Oh, yeah. oh no, audio. They they I'm not even going to bother to ask about video. They wouldn't allow it. This was, this was a surreptitiously uh, oh, recorded. Oh, gotcha. So, it, you know, it, anyway, and I, I had told you guys about this. This case has been going on since October of 13, and uh, I've been fighting this one. I won the first round. They gave me my money back with the bond that I had to post, and now this is the second round where they raised the ticket to a higher ticket instead of giving me the deal where they were only going to steal $160 from me. Now, what uh, is now this ticket for? What is the ticket about? Well, the, the, t- the ticket, it, they claimed I was speeding in a construction zone. This is okay. where I was driving on the highway. The uh, pavement was glass smooth. It was 1 o'clock in the morning. I drive like a little old lady in a little truck they call my bread truck. I, you know, anyway, I drive a little transit truck. And uh, and the cop pulls me over. I was doing all of a 75 and a 70, which I hardly ever even go 70. And I was just, again, the pavement was glass smooth, no traffic around me. So he pulls me over and tells me he's going to cut me this great deal. And uh, so the first first time I showed up, you know, I, I battled it. I didn't want to take the deal. So, of course, the first magistrate round, I lost. Then I went in front of the judge, and I, I pulled some uh, MCR rules out. All right, slow down a ticket. second. So you're in Michigan. The first yep. round was a magistrate. That's yep. different from a judge. Yeah. What's the court? Is it like a traffic court? The first round, as you described it. Well, the magistrate really is. Uh, in, in most you don't cases, live in Michigan, Mark. I wasn't asking you. I, I understand, but well, I'm, I'm ch- trying to, to make it clear for people. Okay. Really, is um, just it, they're just a negotiator for the cops. Okay. I mean, they're not even. They're not even a judge. They don't have really the, the decision-making uh, capabilities. They're just trying to negotiate a ticket so we don't actually have to spend trial time on this. How is that different from in, – in New Hampshire, there's like the police prosecutor who stands in there to try to negotiate plea deals with people. Is that kind that's of the same thing? That's what that's like, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Yep, that's basically exactly right. They, they now have it whittled down in this particular city – where they don't uh, they don't make a, a recording of it or anything, so you have no evidence to go back on. And I mean, they just treat you like you are a piece of dirt. Just to be clear, when and, you're saying uh, they treat you like dirt, no recording, you're talking about the magistrate hearing. Yeah, yeah, got it. There's absolutely you have no rights whatsoever. They just pretty. They, I mean, <laughs> they tell you this is traffic court. You're just you know, it's just mm-hmm. pointless. It's just like you said. It, 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 you know, most of 99 percent of the people, I'm sure, at least the ones I saw. Just comply. Take the plea deal. So you go yep. into the magistrate hearing with the purpose of going with not guilty. Is that the intention? Is that what you do uh, there? Well, yeah. I mean, I try – actually, step back a little bit. I've been uh, you know, I've been following Mark Stevens for quite a few years. Mark Stevens is the author and, uh, of Adventures in Legal Land and uh, kind of a friend of the show. Go ahead. Yep, and Government Indicted, which I have, which I've gotten through almost completely now. Oh, his new book. Been actually, Great. I mean, he yep. used to send me one of those. Go ahead. I, I've, I've been on his show now pretty real regularly. Last Saturday, I was on there for about an hour and a half. He's really been intrigued with the uh, – I have two cases going right now. I told you guys about the other one also where they surrounded my house. I'm that guy. Let's keep it to <laughs> the, the one cop. case uh, yeah, for yeah. today. So, so the yeah. magistrate hearing, is it like in New Hampshire, the, the first hearing is basically a, pr- a pretrial conference where they try to get you to take the plea deal. If you don't, you know, you just go through and – or I guess it depends on what the charge is. There's also arraignments, and that's usually also where they try to get you to take the plea. So you went past right. that. Then what happened? 
Well, that that first one that was back in thirteen, and uh, so then I went to the appeal on that magistrate's decision, and there was a uh, a judge sitting in for the normal judge, and I really threw him for a loop, and I actually you know tried the Mark Stevens approach, and I always have Plan B, uh, you know Plan B and C just in case, and Plan B was I'm quite familiar with the rules, and I brought up the fact that paperwork has to be signed and such, and he said he didn't want to make it obvious in front of everyone there. So he said he would take it under advisement. And then two weeks later, I got a letter and they, they said, okay, you know, they're going to send your, I, I was entitled to get my money back. The case was dropped. Hold well, on now, before, before you go on. All right. So I'm still confused about this magistrate thing. It sounded to me like it was essentially a glorified plea deal situation, but the magistrate you said made a decision and that doesn't happen in New Hampshire. You, if you don't take judge the plea, you just the magistrate. No, no, no. He said the magistrate made okay. a decision, and then he appealed that decision to this judge. Right. In well, the, the magistrate, magistrate hearing, does the cop testify? Is it like a full hearing? Yeah. Yes. It, it okay, that's totally different from New Hampshire then. Completely different. Okay. Yeah, they go by the preponderance of evidence. They try to that, – that was what was brought up today again. Oh, I don't understand. They're telling me this is a preponderance of the evidence case, and, you know, 51 percent, and – and, yep. and all that. So, so when you, you know, get found Ian, guilty, this is this is like essentially an administrative court, right? The, the, you know, this yep. isn't a court of law as right. as no, much I as it's you. just an administrative thing. Yeah, they can have the cop testify. It doesn't really matter what they do inside these administrative things, so long as people understand this guy over here, not a judge. No, no, I get it. I'm sorry. I totally misunderstood. I thought the magistrate was just somebody who took a plea deal uh, from you or tried to get a plea deal out of you. What it sounds like is that's kind of a, you know, um, like you're saying, this administrative hearing, the rules of evidence aren't the same. Uh, the rules of conviction are, are very low. But then you got to appeal that. Is there a cost in Michigan to appeal the magistrate's ruling? Yes. That's why nobody does it. Because wow. at that point, you pay basically the full cost of that ticket to put up the bond to appeal it. Yeah. And that's what I mean. When I went in the second time, that judge reversed the decision uh, on the rules that I pulled out, and I got my money back. That was nice great. Nice job. You walk up, get you. But, but, hold on. Now the officer brought the ticket back as a full speeding in a construction zone he claims was a construction zone. So I've been battling. So now Hold up. I what was the ticket the first time? The first, well, he said, remember, he would cut me a deal, right, and right. he would just get an impeding he, – he cut it down to impeded driving. With the so intention that you were going to take the deal, and then, oh, right. he didn't take the deal. Let's come at him with a full speeding charge. You know, I really wonder right. whether he can do wow. that. Apparently I mean, he that, can. that sounds like double jeopardy for real Not to if me. it's a different charge. It's not double jeopardy, Why right? not? It's the same event. I don't think that's how double jeopardy applies, is it? That's a good point. I, that, now that you've actually mentioned that, uh, Mark and I, he hasn't mentioned it to me, but I, that's a good point. But l let me go. This gets actually pretty interesting All at right. this point. Now I go back to, to, to go for the magistrate again, a different magistrate on this new charge. And every one of those uh, courtrooms are absolutely packed to the brim every oh, yeah. time this happened. I showed up. I was supposed to be there at 815, you know, check in. Court normally doesn't start till between 8.30 and 9. I had to leave work. I showed up at about 8.30. I walked up to the counter, and uh, she says to me, I ch to check in, she says, no, the, the judge is already off the bench. And I said, that's impossible. It's, it's only 8.30. I'm, I'm, not, I'm only, you know, technically it's still check-in time. She says, well... Let me go see if the judge you know, will come up, come back and talk to you. Fascinating. Oh, Stand by. This is, wait, I thought you said this was the magistrate, not the judge. This is the magistrate the magist again. This All right. Stand by. Round. We're going to get the rest of the story here in a moment. Tom, we'll uh, continue with you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So charged with uh, impeding traffic, didn't take the plea deal, beat the case. The cop comes back with a full-on speeding ticket to charge him again. That's where we'll pick up the story in moments with more Free Talk Live. Rising gas prices taking a bite out of your travel budget? Here's something to chew on. You can get more mileage from your travel dollar by staying at America's Best Value Inn, where you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, HBO, and internet at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Plus, join our free value club for room discounts, upgrades, and other instant rewards. Visit AmericasBestValueInn.com. With value in our name, you know you're getting a great deal. Yum. 
You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. It's obvious the government expects people to pay taxes, whether or not they have a law. They are a band of marauders. They are a violent band of thugs, and in my opinion, they're a group of strangers. I mean, if I all of a sudden wrote up an invoice for you, Robert, and send it to your house saying, you owe Free Talk Live $5,000 this year, or if you don't pay us, we're going to send some people after you to punch your face in. Would you cut me a check? I mean, because that's essentially what they're doing. That's essentially what the IRS does. They write a bunch of strangers, people they don't know, an invoice, and they include a bunch of obscure instructions that you're supposed to understand. And then at the very bottom, it says, if you don't follow these instructions to the T, we are going to charge you with a criminal offense and throw you in the clink. This is a threat. And I don't take kindly to threats. I don't know about you. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. It's kind of been a court night here on Free Talk Live. We've talked about our friend Rich Paul, who is going, uh, he's back in jail now uh, because of a violation of probation. We went into a lot of detail on that situation in the first hour and a half of the program. The video footage, uh, the raw footage from court will be up later on, probably sometime tomorrow morning would be my guess, maybe tomorrow during the day. Uh, at freekeen.com if you want to check that out. We've actually got Tom on the line with us here. We're going to get back to his story. He's uh, kind of in the middle of a court debacle that he's telling us about. And also want to let you know about ExpressCoin, the best choice for buying Bitcoins. Now Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. You can get all of those for money order or check, wire transfer, even cash deposit at checking or at uh, credit unions that have what's called shared branching. So different ways for you to get your Bitcoins and those other coins 
with cash, basically. Go to ExpressCoin.com and get your cryptocurrencies, and you can get them fast. ExpressCoin.com. They really care about customer service over there, and you can get it all done from your smartphone as well by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. It started in the United States. Now, if you're in Canada, you can use ExpressCoin.com. Very cool. Back to Tom in Detroit. Tom, you were telling us about what happened, and let me recap just to make sure I've gotten an understanding so far of what you've been telling us. There in Michigan, they have a magistrate process. Now, this is completely different than what I'm used to here in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, if you get a ticket and you want to take it to court, you just go to criminal court, and that's it. Um, in Mass or in uh, Michigan, where you are, the Detroit area, you go to in front of a magistrate first, which has a trial-like thing. But the level of uh, burden of proof is preponderance of the evidence, so it's not a real criminal level kind of trial. And the magistrates, of course, are ultimately glorified plea deal takers for the most part. But you did not take a plea on this impeding traffic charge that the officer gave you instead of a speeding ticket. So you didn't take the plea. You were, of course, found. Do they find you guilty or or not or uh, or responsible or what do they call it in uh, the magistrate hearing? Do we have Tom in Detroit? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, go ahead. What do they call? Okay, uh, they, go ahead. They find you. Re- it's responsible. They find you responsible. Right, and so, so the fine is issued. Uh, you have to pay it. If you want to appeal, you have to pay the fine in advance in order to get the appeal. Oh, you and, want a trial? Yeah. Oh well, you'll have to pay the fine, and then and then we'll see whether or not you win. How's that? And you <laughs> actually did get the fine overturned. You actually won at the appeal, which was amazing, by the way. Um, on, a, on a technicality, right. but yes. That's usually the only way you can win, but you got it. And uh, and then after that, the cop got so upset that you didn't just take the plea. He files another charge against you, this time the speeding charge, the original charge that you would have, should have gotten, supposedly. He's now coming after right. you for this. You show up at the court at 8.30 in the morning, which is during the check-in phase, as you were describing to me, and the the lady behind the window says, sorry, the judge isn't on, the, the judge has left the bench or something like that. Continue the story from there. All right, perfect. So now I'm standing there at the window, and I said, that's impossible. It's, 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 there's no way the court has been, is over. She says, well, uh, you know, let me go talk to her. But first, you have to enter a plea with me, with her right there at the window. And the, in the moment you do that, just as if when you walk in and take the advice of rights form and sign it, you already give the court jurisdiction at that point. And I told her, I'm not entering a plea with you. I want to see the judge. She says to me, I'm the magistrate, you mean the magistrate, yeah. not the judge. Yeah, the, I didn't. Yeah, right, exactly. She says to me, well, I'm not even going to go show it to her until you <laughs> enter a plea. Whoa. So I, I says, okay, I got this one. I says, I've got, a, I've got Mark Stevens' unsigned plea of guilty. I pull it out of my satchel. I says, go give her this. She reads it, kind of puts, you know, gives this funny look because she's never seen one of those before. And she says, wait here a minute. She says, oh, she says go sit right there. Okay. Now, hold on a second. Before you go on with the story, Mark Stevens' approach here is to bring in a pre-prepared, unsigned guilty plea and basically, you know, approach in front of a judge, say that you fully intend to plead guilty should you be able to be shown that, you you know, you had an obligation to follow the rules in the first place, right? Correct. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is where it gets really interesting and scary. I'm sitting there. I'm expecting, you know, somebody to come let me know. The next thing you know, four fully armed or, you know, uniformed police officers, an armed bailiff and a suited bailiff come up to me and said, follow us. I thought, hmm, interesting. And they march me into a courtroom by myself. There's no one else in there. And Mm. they don't have the luxury of having empty courtrooms, okay? Mm -hmm. Who sits there? Another magistrate. And the magistrate, they put the muumuu on whoever they want is an administrator that I had an argument about getting my bond back the first round. And I'm like, oh, this is going to go well. (laughs) So now (laughs) there's four cops standing there at ease watching. This was like a schooling for them. I know that's what this was. Four four of them standing here at ease, the cop that is charging me at the plaintiff's table, the bailiff and the armed bailiff, and me and the magistrate. And now, again, you know, we start up, and, and she pretty much pulls the same thing because there's no recording being made, and now I'm found responsible again. So I appeal that one. And now this is the one that I went back on today, but I filed Mark's awesome motion. I usually file my own, but but this one I used 
he's got a, a, a great motion that you can purchase from him. It's fantastic. And I went in there to argue that motion today. And this is and what where, is the motion? A motion to dismiss? Yes. Okay. I'm sure you're familiar with it because uh, you, you know you know Mark and I I, I watched your DMV hearing. And, uh, yeah, it always just gets blown out in uh, in object. You know, it, the the motion to s- dismiss is never almost never successful. The one from Mark Stevens has never been successful for me, but it's always you know it's fun to file that stuff. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, today I had to argue that motion, and uh, first off, this we I appeared on this back in May or end yeah end of May, and the cop the court was so packed. The cop came up to me and he was really nice to me that day, and he says, you know, can we adjourn this? You know, he she's real busy and blah, blah, blah. And I really did have to get back to work. And I says, okay. So I agreed to adjourn it. And now today, and she, she, when we went up there, she promised me that if, if I showed up at eight o'clock in the morning or, you know, eight fifteen, that I would be first up. So today I was there eight o'clock. I had all my stuff ready. I had my, I put my stuff on the, on the defendant table and the bailiff jumped on me, you know, to get it off of there. I said, no, nope, no, nope, she promised I'd be first up. So he and I kind of got into it. So I brought my stuff back. She finally walks in. Everybody stands up. She calls out a case number, which wasn't mine, and I walked right up there. I says, excuse me, Your Honor, you uh, promised me that I'd be first up. Oh, boy, you can imagine how that went. She threatened me with contempt of court and everything. Mm -hmm. So I had had to wait a little bit. Yeah, these judges and their promises. I mean, you'd think think in their courtroom that when they said something, it would be the truth. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, so what happened? I said, so, so, so basically, I brought out Mark's uh, motion, and she just kept chopping me. I mean, and one of the things I wanted to say, I, when I brought up that constitutional quote or that uh, Bill of Rights quote, she, and I asked her, I actually had a judge pause. I just listened to it as we, I was waiting for you guys in break. She paused for 12 seconds when I asked her if all the elements of the crime, if I was— if I was, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, innocent of all the elements of this allegation, she paused for 12 seconds. You mean presumed innocent? Said, yeah, presumed innocent, exactly. Stand she by, Tom. To we'll let you wrap this up here in a moment. Uh, we'll find out what the judge, in this case, decided to do. We'll talk about that. Your calls as well are welcome about whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny 
shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit, or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. You can join us on Skype as well. No Skype calls yet tonight. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request. If you're not already on our contact list, it'll be approved, and then it'll be easy for you to call on Skype from that point forward. With you tonight here, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, join us online over at freetalklive.com. Become an amplifier for as little as 5 bucks a month. We will take that 5 bucks in, invest it into the show, and get on more radio stations around the country. Just got a new agreement from a new station today. It's actually been a really good uh, week for adding radio stations. Yep, Free Talk week. Live is expanding. Uh, so, yeah. You what do you think? 200 by the end of the year? I'd say it's optimistic, um, but possible. You know, I would say that's within the realm of possibilities at this point. Um, so thank you to everybody who's a Free Talk Live amplifier because your five bucks a month makes a difference for us. It is money that is invested into the show, not just in getting new stations on, but also uh, doing advertising online, say through Google AdWords. Also helps us pay for uh, global satellite channels that we have. Well, we've only got two of them, but we'd like to have more. The AMP program can help with a lot of that. It helps send us to the industry conventions where we schmooze it up with the radio talk bigwigs and things like that. So go to amp.freetalklive.com and you get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast, which doesn't have the regular commercials that our normal uh, podcast does. And you also get access to the brand new or newish AMP only Facebook group, which has been a lot of fun thus far. So don't miss out on AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. We've got Tom on the line in Detroit. He is going through what is a, a saga of uh, traffic tickets. And uh, he got a, you got one ticket for impeding. He should have gotten a speeding ticket, ended up beating that actually. And then the cop came back with a speeding ticket, which Mark, you said that might be double jeopardy. And I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe there's an argument for it. The Wikipedia de- definition of double jeopardy is it's a procedural defense that forbids a defendant from being tried again on the same or similar charges following a legitimate acquittal or conviction. So is impeding traffic similar to speeding? It's the same incident. The police officer thought at the time the best thing to charge him with, mm. with was impeding traffic. But then after he got found not guilty, the police officer then decided that the best thing to charge him with was speeding. That sounds that's that sounds like a smells a lot like bs from yeah. this to this country boy it's worth an argument that's for sure so tom went back on the speeding ticket he of course lost at the magistrate level appealed again as he did on the prior one appealed to the actual trial and that's where we're continuing the story you had actually filed tom a uh, motion to dismiss and if it's the same motion i'm thinking of from mark stevens over at adventures in legal land uh, mark mark with a c is his website 
if it's the same motion I'm thinking of, it's the one that objects on a few different, you know, points out a few different things. One that the state doesn't have jurisdiction and can't prove that it has jurisdiction. Uh, and then there's a couple other uh, points in there, but that's one of the the major ones. Is that is that the one that you're you're talking about? Yeah, it's it's great. It's it, yes, it is. Motion to strike, dismiss complaint, and request for full finding of fact and conclusion of law. That's what what it's titled. And I would point so, out that um, you know it, these things haven't been successful for Ian when he's tried them. But you're not Ian, and neither is anyone else. Um, they, and, the courts. And we're not Mark. <laughs> right. Unfortunately. Well, that much We're is true. Good as Mark. Well, that much is true. But the fact is, is that the courts are waiting on Ian when he comes. Um, when we, when I had a speeding ticket here in New Hampshire, they knew who I was. They had an extra cadre of, uh, of bailiffs w- uh, for the people that were filming uh, when I came. They know here who we are, and their answer to everything we say is no, 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 no. I mean- I'm in exactly the same boat because back in 2011, I used Mark's strategy and beat them, and I told you guys about this, where they were charging me with an assault on a police officer that they I called it uh, arrested by mail to where I wouldn't answer any questions. And two days later, I get a, a letter in the, or a, you know, a, a citation that I'm being charged with assault on a police officer, and I beat that one. And this is the same city. I made three of their attorneys look like idiots, so I'm now their project. Oh, yeah. It doesn't take much to uh, you know, make a court aware. You just have to stand up for yourself, and then they'll know who right. you are from that point forward. Well, so uh, so give us back into the story here. You were in front of a judge this time. The yeah. judge was having a hearing on your motion to dismiss, and what happened? Yeah. Okay, well, as we were going through it, every time I – she would not let me ask the cop any questions or the prosecutor – and every time I tried to ask her questions, she said I couldn't ask her questions. So when I asked her if, she, if I was presumed innocent of all presumptions and assumptions and elements of the crime, again, a 12-second delay. And then she said, you are asking me questions, and you can't do that. And then she said, these are <laughs> quotes. I just listened to it. She said, you are asking me a legal question. I'm not an attorney. Blah, blah, blah. Out of her mouth. I swear that's what she said. I just Whoa. Look at the Yep. And then she said, you need to get an attorney. I told her I am uh, presumed innocent and quoted the, the, the what that constitutional or, you know, what, what I just said. And, uh, you know, she, and you I are asked asking her, legal questions. You're asking questions to try to understand procedural questions of what's happening in this procedure. Right. I mean, that's part of what a judge is supposed to do is to help a person who's representing yeah. themselves uh, the, pro in se. Theory. Right. Well, that's that's yeah. what they're there for. They're the freaking referee. That's what we were told all our lives. And the fact is, this legal system, this jurisdiction, this judicial system is full of liars. That is one of the fun parts about Mark Stevens' questions. I mean, <clears throat> I've never had any judge throw out a case because of it but i have had them get really upset (laughs) and if one thing's if there's something that mark stephen is really good at is is upsetting judges in administrative tribunal hearings and uh, judges and wherever but basically mark gives you some questions that you can ask that are very very powerful questions and and you're talking about just one of them but what you're saying is this judge doesn't want to hear any questions and usually when you when you go into a new courtroom if they don't know who you are already and you start asking these questions, you'll usually get through a couple of them, two or three, before the judge starts to flip out and <laughs> refuse to answer the questions. Which, of course, makes the judge, if there's anyone in the room, which in your case there wasn't, they dragged you into like a secret courtroom. Oh, no, no, no. No, this today, that was the last one. Remember, that was the magistrate. Oh, the now magistrate. The so today you were in front yeah. of a packed courtroom. That's right. Oh, and, yeah. And, and, That's what Mark Stevens' questions are the best for, in my opinion, because it reveals the violence and the ridiculousness and the outrageous uh, unfairness in the system in front of anyone who happens to encounter that hearing. So you got this judge to show how outrageous she absolutely is, how unhelpful she is, right in front of well, an entire court. How she's not a lawyer. What yeah. are you doing up there in a black robe if you haven't completed law school. Is she elected? Are they elected judges in uh, in Mich- Michigan? Yes, but she has to be a lawyer. There's no way she's not a lawyer because she started quoting uh, rules when I was questioning her mm-hmm. on things that I wanted. She says, well, I don't have to do that because of this rule. I said, can I see that rule? Can, I, can you show me that? I don't have to show you anything. And I have, have my Michigan court rules. I always have my books with me, like mm-hmm. I said, for backup plan B and C. But just let me finish this. Go. I stopped when I was reading that that out of the Constitution or, or uh, whatever. I stopped on all men are created equal, and I asked her, am I equal to this accuser? And I pointed at the police officer. Ooh. 
And she again paused and she said, well, we need to swear you in. And the what? police officer raises his hand, and I said, "No, no, no! I'm not. I'm not testifying. I'm going to ask questions of my accuser. I'm not testifying yet." And all of a sudden, again, it changed to you know just just hammering me with everything she could. And she was literally every time she would say something, say to the prosecutor, "Isn't that right, Mister So and So?" She did that three times, and I finally said, "Wait a minute! Are you asking him legal questions?" <laughs> that yeah. didn't go over real well either. Because she's like, no, I'm not. Because she was, re- you know, I, I, and then I asked her, I says, am I already presumed guilty? I mean, you, you guys are talking to each other. And I challenged her. I says, <laughs> why am I having this debate with you, the judge? I says, I should be having this with these two guys who are accusing me. And I said, the uh, officer and his helper. <laughs> well, she's <laughs> but, carrying water for him. Absolutely. Yeah. All so, right. So what ultimately goes- happened here? Well, basically, she shot me down, and uh, I asked, okay, so this this is not a trial. I assumed that this was going to be my appeal and motion hearing all in one. And she's like, no, no. I said, great. Then I request a trial. So it's on then, right? Like, you've got a trial date. Yep. So it's it's continued. This is going on since October of 13. I wish you could get a camera in for this, man. I really do. It sounds like a fascinating. I mean, I guess the audio would be okay if it was decent, but you said it was surreptitiously recorded, so a lot of times that audio is not going to be worth posting. I thank you for the to, uh, the time and the, the story tonight, Tom. And I would really like to encourage folks in Tom's position, people who uh, have an appreciation for sort of clogging the courts, and who have the willingness to do this, come to New Hampshire, where we can have 20 people show up to support you and record it. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons.
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we invite you to take control here in the remaining moments. There's enough time for you with your call and thoughts. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype in at username lrn.fm. Like the show and want to help support Free Talk Live? You can do that by shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. And you can buy whatever it is you're looking to buy, including Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. You can get the DVD Director's Cut version for under 10 bucks at Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. That way Amazon, you know, they get a little something. But when you buy it through shop.freetalklive.com, we get, Free Talk Live gets a cut of whatever it is you're purchasing. Pretty much anything uh, through shop.freetalklive.com. And again, don't forget you can watch Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree for free at victimlesscrimespree.com. But if you like the movie, buy a copy on DVD. You can explore the eight hours of bonus footage. The commentary tracks, which by the way, if you like the movie online you don't get the commentary track online in fact two commentary tracks one with just Derek J just him kind of reflecting and riffing on uh, the movie his experience in, in watching it and then another one with myself Derek J and editor Bo Davis editor and producer Bo Davis so that's more of a fun track they're both fun tracks I've listened to them both and uh, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting kind of, there's a lot of interesting insights to the movie making process and it's it's great so go and check that out at victimlesscrimespree.com and again you can grab the DVD through shop.freetalklive.com you know what i was saying a moment ago mark we can get to the Sudafed story here in in just a bit but as i was we were talking with tom in uh, detroit about his courtroom experience and this right. guy is practiced i mean he knows what he's doing he's confident he's going in there uh, he's taking things to trial little stuff like a speeding ticket taking this stuff to trial and he's even willing to put up money in advance which is a big deal like i like being in new hampshire where you don't have to do that you just go to trial and then afterwards when you're found guilty is when they want you to pay up in a lot of states like michigan they demand you pay the fine before they'll give you the trial and in then, some cases there are court fees that make taking a, a, some uh, tickets to trial really sort of stupid and redundant. Like, right. for instance, if you uh, get a parking ticket and you want to take it to trial which or to, to court, um, you know, in front of a judge, which, you know, is your right as a U.S. citizen, so they they'll claim. charge you, oh, I don't know, $150 or whatever or it is more. to take a $5 parking ticket to trial. Town it makes ordinance, no sense. Ordinance violations in Sarasota, Florida, which is where you and I are from, Mark, I happen to see the rundown. When I was there, a friend of mine was there for a, a charge, and he happened to have the sheet, which kind of give you a breakdown of what the court fees are, the court costs are. It was more money for an ordinance violation than it was a misdemeanor. So that's because they don't want you to take their, their yeah. little tickets to trial. And it was like, I swear are to you, are you kidding me? Our our stinking shiftless government bureaucrat gave you a ticket, and you'll like it. I swear to you, it was three hundred dollars in court costs for it's for crazy. an ordinance violation. Now I don't know if I don't know if in Florida you have to pay that in advance. That may be something they hit you with after the fact when you get found guilty. But regardless, my point was even so, it's prohibitive. 
Oh, absolutely. They don't. You you only get justice in most places if you're a rich person. I mean, that's definitely the truth. There's no uh, doubt about that well, being the justice, truth. Justice, rich rich person. To, uh, when it comes to parking tickets, w- what I saw when I was working downtown in Sarasota, Florida, is is that rich people would park wherever the heck they wanted to. Fire lanes, uh, the you know the side of the street, whatever they wanted to do. They get a parking ticket. So what? It, they as far as pay it. it was just a par- it was just a parking fee as far as they were concerned. Right. So my point was, Tom has all these things going for him in that he's willing to buck the system. He's willing to take things to trial, not take the plea deal, which I'm a huge fan of. And by the way, Rich Paul did not take the plea today. They did offer him something, and I think it involved time served, but he did not take that plea. So Tom's not taking the plea. He's going to court. He's got a buddy there who's surreptitiously recording the trial. You know, that's fine. It's something. It's at least it's some sort of independent record of what happened, but you can't openly do it. If you get caught, you might get a charged with contempt of court for doing that. In New Hampshire, all I had to do to go and record a trial with a video camera on a tripod openly today was walk in, set the tripod up. Now, I'm a little different because I've been in this courthouse a zillion times and have recorded video, so they don't even ask me for any kind of proof the bailiffs were being kind of pushy today with people who weren't me. So they approached Derek J, and he had a camera in the courtroom. And they said, do you have your permission? And Derek J said something. Or have you, re- have you registered with the court as a media? And he said something about that he was with Free Keen. That was enough for them. They didn't demand to see his paperwork or anything like that. And then they asked another uh, young lady who was sitting down with a camera in the court if she had been registered with the court. And she said she had not. And they told her she couldn't use the camera. So... You know, your mileage may vary. Different states and different courts even within a state have different rules about how things are supposed to go. But in New Hampshire, despite sometimes having to jump through a few hoops, like signing some sort of form and giving it to the court clerk prior to a notice, basically. Just having people around that know how to do that is valuable when it comes to activism. Yeah. But my point being, I have not had a problem recording video in New Hampshire with the exception of the federal court here. It's only, you know, New Hampshire state and circuit courts, district courts, et cetera, no problems whatsoever. Everybody else that calls the show, I always ask them, can you record in your state? No, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. Well, if you're an activist in the realm of the court system, you really should be in a place where you can have backup. How can backup. you teach other people how to do it if you don't have recordings? You can't. They want you to keep. They want other people to be kept in the dark. Absolutely, about this stuff. they want people to be petrified when they go into court. That's what they do. So um, again, here today in court, we had 20 people there to support Rich Paul, and that's on the low side for a fairly large trial. Of course, it's all the way out in Keene and. It was also then there was an issue with this morning. They thought it was going to be nine o'clock, but it turned out it was one thirty. So there was kind of a time change. But regardless, I've seen fifty people in a courtroom up here supporting the person who is on trial. How many people went with you the last time you were in court? If you don't live in New Hampshire, now you can you can live in New Hampshire and not have many people show up if you don't tell anyone. Like there are some people that they just want to quietly go to court and do their own thing without having an audience supporting them. But if you want supporters. If you want people to be behind you at a trial, to observe, to record, you can have that here in New Hampshire. You can have it almost instantaneously just by moving as part of the Free State Project. So go to freestateproject.org. Let's talk Sudafed. Yeah, let's think, let's go here. From alternet.org, a woman with allergies arrested and imprisoned for buying Sudafed. Florida sheriff's officers falsely arrested and imprisoned a woman with allergies for buying two boxes of Sudafed at a drugstore, she claims, in federal court. Mickey Lynn Goodson claims she bought the two boxes of the over-counter drug because the pharmacist recommended it. She oh, su- no. She sued Gadsden County Sheriff's um, Young and the t- two officers, um, excuse me, Morris Young and the two officers who arrested her. I mean, I, I can't I imagine she'll what be successful it, with the suit. What's that? I don't believe she'll be successful with the suit. I don't know whether she'll be successful or not, um, but uh, we're just I, doing our jobs. I ma'am. think it's fascinating that a person buying two <laughs> with allergies, buying two uh, things of Sudafed, is mm. is going to get uh, arrested. Charges of possession of a controlled substance were eventually dropped. Wow! Um, in July 2010, Goodson says she went to a Win Dixie store to get Sudafed because she has allergy flare-ups. Sudafed contains pseudoephedrine, which can be used as a precursor chemical in some recipes for methamphetamines. Mm-hmm. 
The pharmacist on duty suggested the plaintiff buy two boxes of Sudafed, and she did. Jeez. Um, almost immediately, defendant officer uh, Moore drove up in an unmarked police car. Almost blocked immediately. Blocked her in. I don't wow. have any, I know they take your driver's license information. Incredible. I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, asked if she had just bought Sudafed. She said she had. Okay. We don't do Oops. that. We don't answer. Are you conducting an investigation, officer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why, uh, yes, I am. Well, conducted elsewhere. I'm not answering any questions. You can you can direct your questions to my attorney. <laughs> right. Who's your attorney? Do some police work. Yeah, you figure, figure it, it out, out. buddy. <laughs> it's not my job to tell you these things. Um, she said more, uh, more took the Sudafed and told the Goodsons that they had to wait for more officers to arrive, detaining them against their will. De- Defendant Buckhold arrived with other deputies. These are the police officers. Uh, searched the Goodsons' car. They were taken to the sheriff's station where Buckhold asked if she could search if where the the officer asked if he could search their home the goods oh, no. goodson said no unless oh, there's goodness. a search warrant and uh, he says oh i'll get a search warrant according to the complaint after she was uh, held for two or three hours she's uh, left the sheriff's office she was arrested and handcuffed on her front porch by a deputy who asked her what have you gotten rid of and she replied i don't know what you're talking about but was taken back to the county uh, jail and booked in charged with possession of a controlled substance the plaintiff was arrested on her front porch after the buckled this uh, deputy here obtained a search warrant on false and misleading statements on the evidence. Um, the, the the complaint cites later when an order granting the motion to suppress was entered, um, suppressing all evidence received pursuant to a search warrant. The judge stated that he um, had the magistrate been aware of the omission of critical evidence and facts in the documents signed by Buckholt to obtain the search warrant, he would not have found sufficient probable cause to hmm. issue the search warrant. So that's the so one. So she beat the charges. Yes. But she might be able to get it just because this cop basically falsified a search warrant. And they'll do anything to bust you for Sudafed these days. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Just when you thought it was safe to buy cold medicine. See you tomorrow. freetalklive.com. Are you? On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said... Uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,299 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $606.
Antiwar.com reports, as Israel's invasion of the Gaza Strip continues to escalate, the overall death toll continues to rise, with civilians the overwhelming victims of the onslaught. Most troubling, perhaps, is the growing number of children among the slain. Israel got some negative publicity last week when they killed four young children in an airstrike against the beach, but there is no indication it changed anything about Israel's targeting standards, and the most recent figures show roughly 24% of those killed in the war are under the age of 18. A lot of these deaths have come as Israel attacks civilian neighborhoods, pounding seemingly random houses and killing large numbers of entire families. Israel has insisted they've warned civilians to flee, but since they don't let any one out of the Gaza Strip, there isn't any place for them to go that isn't just as likely to be targeted. Indeed, even as Israeli officials continue to pat themselves on the back for their precise targeting, the number of combatants they've actually hit is a tiny minority of the overall toll. By contrast, Hamas, which isn't known for being particularly accurate with its makeshift weapons, has managed to keep the Israeli toll almost exclusively military in nature, with only three civilians killed in Israel. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The LA Times reports, officials said an Arizona inmate gasped and snorted for more than an hour until dying in an apparently botched execution Wednesday that is sure to reinvigorate the national debate over lethal injection in the United States. The death of Joseph Rudolph Wood III was confirmed by the Arizona Attorney General about two hours after the procedure began. Wood had apparently stayed alive so long that his attorney filed an emergency stay after the lethal injection initially failed to kill him, according to legal filing. According to the filing, quote, the Arizona Department of Corrections began the execution of Joseph Rudolph Wood III at 1.52 p.m. At 1.57 p.m., ADC reported that Mr. Wood was sedated, but at 2.02, he began to breathe. At 2.03, his mouth moved. Mr. Wood has continued to breathe since that time. He has been gasping and snorting for more than an hour. At 3.02 p.m., at that time, staff rechecked the sedation. He is still alive. The execution had originally been set for Wednesday morning, but was delayed by a temporary stay to hear arguments in a last-minute appeal effort by his attorney. His attorney said that his trial attorney failed to present evidence of mental illness, including brain damage, that could have spared him a capital sentence. On Tuesday, the U.S. Supreme Court denied a separate plea by Wood to delay his execution until the state turned over detailed information on the drugs that would be used during his execution and on the quality qualifications of his execution team. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports, another session of Iraqi parliament came and went with no settlement, though it is widely expected that the vote on president will proceed today as the Kurdish bloc has finally settled on a candidate. That will be Fuad Masoum, a longtime member of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan party and a former de facto Kurdish premier during the Saddam Hussein era. Under the power-sharing agreement, the position of parliament speaker traditionally goes to a Sunni Arab, the position of president to a Kurd, and prime minister to a Shiite Arab. This is not a legal requirement, but has so far held true in every Iraqi government. Masoum is said to have narrowly beat out Baram Selah, former Kurdish member of parliament, in the closed-door vote on which candidate would be offered to parliament as the unanimous Kurdish choice. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Today's most popular video games take place in dangerous post-apocalyptic landscapes. But are these games enough to prepare our kids for the actual post-apocalyptic future we will all soon face? Well, I think these games are quite effective at teaching our kids skills like finding shotgun ammo and leading elite squads of super soldiers. But these aren't the advanced skills that they're going to need. They're that going to need the more practical skills like You're how to find drinking water by collecting the morning dew and human yes, skulls. Or, or how to deal with depression when the sun is blocked out for 500 years by a cloud of radioactive Absolutely. dust. Absolutely. Now, that's the type of knowledge these kids are going to need when their world has been turned into a brutal hellscape. But these kids said that they know how to find items to barter at weapon shops and how to use medicine packs to heal zombie bites. The games make it all seem deceptively simple. I mean, in the future, a kid's not going to be able to kill a six-foot-long irradiated beetle just by pressing a few Absolutely. buttons, and he's well, going to have to get down there with an axe and hack and hack but and hack. This is the Onion News Network. It's time for Off the Air Live. And here's your host, Cody O'Connor. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Off the Air Live, and it is Thursday night. So we're just hanging out here, and we're going to have a good time. Phone lines are wide open right now at 774-314-7067, or you can Skype in at Off The Air Live. Did, like, a plane go down or something? Great. Wonderful. Plane went down. Crashed. Everyone's dead, right? Okay. I don't. I feel like I can't make that my world. When when I'm sitting here and the way that I'm spending my Thursday night is drinking a 40 from a paper bag, I can't go, oh, well, you know, other people have problems too, you know. The, oh, wouldn't it really be a bummer for you to... Listen, here's my take on this. If you knowingly boarded a Malaysian flight after the first one went missing, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I mean, come on. Really? Why would anybody ever fly in Malaysian anything? No, no, totally. This time around, guys, no planes are going to go missing. You're going to be fine. You know, we're not going to like, <laughs> we're not going to fly over a war zone. What? Uh, that'd be crazy. Like, who would do that? Are all of these pilots insane or is there a deeper conspiracy? I don't 